chimp oh. strong. I just want to be one day as strong as a chimp. I want to be chimp strong. <laughs> have you seen how jacked they are? Have you seen the ones that like don't have hair on them and like they're absolutely jacked? Well, let's have a look at these. Let's <laughs> there we go. They um, are jacked. Jesus Christ. Look how lean they are. <laughs> these guys, we lift no weight. We're looking, what we're looking at right now to start off this podcast is some fascinating hairless chimps. Slim and testy stat. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> trying to be like bulls, but I don't, think that, I don't think that works well. I think bulls is the man with that. But um, they're, they're sitting around 8 to 10% body fat and are just jacked. So... Jeez, look at the hog on him. <laughs> he's got a big slung. <laughs> he's just, he's packing heat. Packing. <laughs> Boys, what's going on? What's cracking? <laughs> Not mine, Not yeah. Much, man. How's, how's life? Good, bro. I'm just keen to be here. Yeah. Like, oh, we haven't sat down in a long time. It feels like. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just talk some chimps. Just talk some chimps. Um, well, yeah, you go. Sorry. No, it's just been a while since I've been on the chimp podcast, but this time I get to be. With my main man. Yeah. Bozilla. Bozilla. Brickles. Uh, Brickles, Jay Maletti, Jay Hole. Um, yeah, this is the first time me and Jay Dirk Hull. have been on a podcast together. So, yeah, the boys. So we're going to see what happens. I, I get it. Hey. 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 That's what we got. Hey. The weekend cucks. Anyways. Um, <laughs> weekend warriors. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna, yeah, so... um. This is a sort of a pilot, if you will. Mm. Um, uh, not really, but it's like- a new series. Brick and I are going to make our own podcast. It's coming soon. Yeah. What are you going to call it? Uh, we haven't even talked about that. Uh, <laughs> we just said me and Dirk just want to do a podcast. We just have a feeling. <laughs> just we, have a, we have a feeling. We know we, want, we, yeah. we know we want it. Well, this could be the first one. 28-year-old uh, white male, male 20-year-old white male, or well, 27 now, but um, yeah, we're going to do some um, podcast shit, so it should be fun. Um, Are you guys serious? Yeah, no. I want to. I want to actually do one. I want it legit. I want to like fork out some. Um, We've been discussing money it. for this, but um, oh, for real? Yeah, yeah legit. I want to actually like do it. Um, I know it's like every white male is like, "Fuck, I got to do a podcast." Oh, boys, good to do a podcast. You know what the difference is? Your brickles. <laughs> but I reckon, um, yeah, I reckon it'd just be fun. Like, obviously, we can talk about S and C, um, and just a mixture of stuff, like a way that's informal, mm. informally discussing. <laughs> The gym environment, you know what I mean? Because when it's wood for you, you've got to be a little bit more professional. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. But we just want to have a good chat about our week, what's happening. Because, man, too many funny things happen. You know, just too many enjoyment. So things. this is purely a podcast centered around strength and conditioning, health, wellness, fitness, and what? Is that life. it? Yeah. Yeah, and we just talk bullshit. Like, it's pretty much just like us shooting the shit. Um, yeah, obviously, I'll see him during the week as well. But, like, I don't know. We, we sort of got to flesh it out. In terms of what we're going to put on there, but um, I feel like it can be good, like just to have us two on there. Um, obviously get along with Dirk really well, so mm. I feel like that'd be something that'd be um interesting. I say interesting um to fifty people, um, <laughs> and the members might be happy about that, and a couple of my friends. Um, yeah, should be fun. So we'll see what happens in the new year. Um, we'll see how it goes. Well, th- this is going to be right now a little bit of a prelude. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and we'll see how it goes. Like, we'll see if how you we like sort this, of then um. Follow us. <laughs> Where can I follow you? At Coach DeGrimist and Bristol's. At J Hole Maletti. Now, can one you one. explain who <laughs> is J Hole Maletti? What are you talking about? There's a lot of. <laughs> I'm going to adjust this mic while you explain this nonsense. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking insight jokes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, get the right up there. Um, there's a lot of inside jokes. So, Didier Vassoul, friend of the show, um, strength culture, uh, man, we love him. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, me and him talk some absolute shit. And so, um, yeah, one day it's a strange culture thing. Started calling me fucking J hole, called him D hole. Um, we call our other friend Vlad B hole. And um, we're just in this group chat talking some fucking absolute shit. And yeah, that's how it just came about. Maletti is also, um, I don't know how that came about. It's more, um, oh, I think the guys at strength culture playing like Call of Duty and did start to call me fucking J Maletti. And then we just uh, came J hole Maletti. And I was like, fuck, why not? feel like on Instagram as well, I can sort of, you know. You play I, around. I don't have to be fucking all serious. Like a lesson I learned from uh, the guys, obviously at Woodford, but the guys at Culture as well is just, just be yourself, man. Don't need to be fucking all serious and all like just fucking like this. <laughs> just relax a little bit. Just enjoy <laughs> ourselves. Like it's social media. again one more time, please? <laughs> just fucking like this. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like it, it's no, 
there's no point being all like fucking because I used to be all like that. Like I gotta yeah. try and you know I have to do all this good information. I have to you know develop quality stuff for people. Great posts. Um, and I just felt like just posting training and music and whatnot. Just I don't know. Just it makes you more relatable and it makes people you know want to actually follow you. Hopefully. Um, so yeah, like that's why I call Jay Homiletti. I just don't not give a fuck. But just I just don't really care too much about like being like this. You know. No, I love that. Knowledgeable, like I was knowledgeable, but I want to be like a fucking you know uptight, you know. Yes, uh, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. Yeah, three bags full, sir. Yeah, no, exactly. I love that you do that though, and that's got a mean to start doing it as well because I used to be the same. I was like for so long, it's like you know you can't post like oh a photo we took together, like you know, a funny <laughs> photo. Why can't we post that? It's like yeah. you know, shout out to yeah, look at me, coach. Probably yeah, shout out to Chichi. <laughs> Happy birthday, brother. Um, you know, you can just enjoy yourself. And like, you know, when you put some stuff about your guitar, or, you know, going out with your friends, you know, you're actually enjoying life. You know, there's more to being a coach. And I think it inspires people to actually have a better life while still mm. aiming to achieve goals. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that be coaching or training, you know, there's so many aspects of life. Oh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> That's something that it's like you go on Gorgon's page, right? You know what you're getting? <laughs> Serious Gorgon's life and death yeah. shit, right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Stretch that so as boy. <laughs> <laughs> I need at least eight hours, boy. Um, <laughs> That's funny. I oh, know. And so you have the like the serious goggins shit. Yeah. Right. And then even that I come like I was talking to Matt and Alex on on the Talking Chimps podcast when I had them on. I'm like how serious I've been over my life. And then coming to Woodford's, that having to get in, eaten, thrown out pissed on and just turned into an, a different person. Cause in order to survive at a place like Woodford, uh, you need to not take yourself so seriously. You gotta be able to call yourself a chimp and just laugh at the nonsense of life. And I think that's what people like you guys have taught me and reflected a mirror back onto me. It's like, you know what? It doesn't all need to be serious. It doesn't all need to be. But it's still something uh, I definitely have a proclivity towards posting a lot of more serious topics that interest me. But I think that's something to take away, man, is just like showing more sides of yourself. Well, I think that if you want to. reels in people a lot more and like connects to you a lot yeah, more. connects. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like people can relate to you and be like, you know, there's, there's more to Coach Dirk than fucking yelling at these South Melbourne kids running you know, every <laughs> Wednesday night, you know. There's something, there's something else happening, you know? So I feel like it's a great way of connecting to people even mm-hmm. once you haven't met them so that the moment they do try to contact you, they feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Because it can be intimidating. You yeah. can have an intimidating presence if you're like a serious health professional, coach, or serious anybody. Yeah. Yeah, and you just don't get people that want to train with you. Well, you can get some people that want to train with you in terms of just like- Because Christian's very serious. Yeah. yeah, but he could also jokes around when he takes his <laughs> pants off and, and, and runs down whatever. That's what I mean. You have that mix yeah. right? because people still appreciate his content. Yeah. It's just that you know he's being himself, and you know that's that's all right. Mm. So everyone can be themselves, and I feel like when you're out there trying to be professional, of course, do it because you, you're doing it for the right reasons. You want to help people, and then when you want to just show a bit of your life, don't obviously don't have to be stupid and be in a, you know always mm. inappropriate. But in the, the day, man, just be yourself because like that's what Brick's saying. Don't try to do it because you're trying to, okay, now I have to show other parts of my life. Just do it because- Naturally. You, yeah, just do it naturally, organically, because yeah. you want to yeah. love that area yeah. of your life, like playing the guitar. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What's your version of that? Me? Mm. The selfies where I always put my tongue out with brick, that's a big one. <laughs> what do you like to do, Chris? What's your <laughs> what's the shit you like to do outside of um training or whatnot? Like, what do you enjoy? Yeah, that's a good question, man. Like, for me- oh. Spin it back on you. Ooh, yeah, throw it at me. <laughs> nah, love, love going for little walks on the beach, hikes, everything. Something what the different. fuck is this, a Tinder profile? Yeah. Walks on the beach? Yeah, walks <laughs> on the beach. Nah, I love it, man. I love just being outdoors, man. Yeah, nature. Love nature, love outdoors. I love catching up with people, like, you know, being social. That's a like big this, thing. man, this has never been more important in my life. That's why I want to get, like, the boys down, the guys down, yeah. right? The gang. The gang, right? Where we can have the opportunity to, like... Just talk nonsense yeah. and, and connect. Because how often do we do that? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I love like, you know, when we ever go out either for dinner, for a couple of drinks, like, you know, there's a couple of funny photos flying around. Like, I love that. 
<laughs> sure. And like, I love to catch up with my friends and really connect outside of training because me and Brick see each other all the time, yeah. nearly every day. But at the end of the day, we still want to catch up outside of it. Because you see each other, but it doesn't mean you're actually having like, you're, you're, you're purposefully hanging out and connecting. Exactly. You're just in each other's presence, but you're doing other things. Exactly. And that's why it's enjoyable for me. Number one, hanging out with my friends doing this. Mm. It's exciting. Mm. And on a Sunday, I love it. Yeah. Here on a Sunday, Smack, talking chimps. Sm- oh yeah, Bricky, smack the table. Talking bloody, yeah. Smack the table. You got a lot of accents, yeah. Brick. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just a fucking weed cunt, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, what Dirk was saying, sorry, uh, it's broke there. What Dirk was saying about just like, um, I feel like as well, if you're too sort of uptight and just too, you're not yourself, people just see right through that. So mm. for me, I felt like when I just act a bit, Doggy, if you will, just a bit stupid. Um, just fuck around, like I don't know. Just I feel like I'm on myself, and I just enjoy um, everything. Just even in training and stuff, like hanging around with Dirk and stuff like that. Just knowing um, in terms of aggression, when to go, when not to go. Um, and I feel like also um, where I train Australian culture, they brought out a lot m- um, more in me, and uh, sorry, out of me in terms of confidence and stuff. So um, yeah, it's just fucking enjoyable, man. And it's not having just a gym um, just be your only thing. It's like you have other stuff that keeps you going and hanging out with a lot of younger people will do that for me. But, um, yeah, it's just like Dirk was saying, it's just enjoyable. And I feel like, um, for example, if uh, you or Cranich or Jess back in the day and stuff like that, just like I felt like we could always hang out outside of Woodford and it's just more enjoyable. And even with these guys, like, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of a lot of just fun and just, um, yeah, just truly breath. Rest. Truly blessed to have um, all these guys um, and girls in my life. So, yeah. Mm. but yeah, it's a lot. A lot of wood for talk. A lot of just in house sort of stuff going on here. But yeah, um, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. But at the same time, it's like it's like a family, right? Yeah. And when you have a when you have a podcast or when you have anything you're putting out to the world, there's there's certain people that feel like, oh, people are listening, so I have to then create for them. Mm. I have to talk about things they want to hear. And so we might be doing this and some people may have no minimal context. What's Woodford? Like I have like thousands of people who have no idea like what that is, right? But at the same time, like I don't even want to think about that. I just want to just sit here and talk. And if you if you want to know, you can look and look it up. You yeah. can go through the history books and you can find out. But I just want to have like a conversation. I don't even want to yeah. think about like trying to be something else or trying to consider like, you know, trying to create something that's perfect. I love that. That's fucking, that makes a lot of sense. And it applies to all of us here. Like we, um, obviously we hang out in the gym and we hang, and, but also we, we go to dinner together. We also hang out at different bars. We also just enjoy each other's company. And I felt like over the past year or so, like COVID's definitely helped that man. Like I feel like, in terms of intimate connections, mm. it's needed more now than ever. Yeah. And just ain't it. And yeah, so, ain't, tell them. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, sometimes there's that um there's that, you know, stereotype that, you know, if you're an S and C coach or something, you can't go out, you know, have a couple of drinks with your friends or you know, you, you can't enjoy yourself. Like you have to be strict and Dude. professional the whole time. Yeah. The whole life. And it gets worse like the more you go up the totem pole. Let's say you're a standard conditioner. Let's say you're a doctor now, right? Let's say you're Dr. Ronda Patrick, you go Dr. Peter Ot, you go like Dave O'Brien, you go like these like really well respected Jack Dollarshall, who's really well respected like health professionals in in this around the game. And it's like, oh you can't get you can't get caught with a bowl of fruit loops. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you can't get caught slipping with anything that could be typically called like unhealthy. Like, I post one time me eating gluten free wheat bix, and I got a couple messages. Oh, you surely yeah. not? No, nah, I did. That's fucking. I got a couple. No, cu- sure. I call a couple curiosities, right? <laughs> Just like, hmm, like, what's up with the wheat bix, bro? Like, are there other alternatives that we could do instead? And I get what they're saying, right? Because it's like some, you know, to um, on the spectrum of food quality. In isolation, wheat bix is probably not very high, but the context of why someone would consume that is important. And so let's say you, for the next 10 years, you talk about how important athlete development is or how important powerlifting is, but then you get caught, I'm taking six months off lifting, right? And you just do fucking yoga or you do something else, or you talk about how important um, supplementation and nutrient dense foods is for years and years and years. And then you post doing something that's contradicting that. You know, I think you can get almost get caught 
you can get caught in like your own cycle uh, of needing to be someone and in an image, you've created an image and you have to keep maintaining that image or maybe people don't trust you anymore. Maybe you don't trust yourself. I don't know. It's like a, a conflict that people get. It's like, nah, like shout out to cocoa bombs, gluten-free cocoa bombs, bro. The OG. You know, I need 600 grams of carbs and not all of them are coming from sweet potatoes and bananas. Yeah, exactly. That's what people don't fucking understand. Like it's all context, man. Like, Thank you. yeah. yeah. Like, for example, we had, like, the wheat bix or the, the cocoa bonds. People are like, oh, why are you having this? Well, fucking, I can't be having 500 carbs on clean food. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> if I have five... If tell them. Uh, tell them. Say it. <laughs> if I have... <laughs> the dumb dogs. If I Bro. have 500 fucking carbs and I've got and I've got sweet potatoes, I've got fucking all this bullshit, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to reach this. The amount of fiber as well, like, especially in a clean sort of diet, like... It's gonna be back the fuck up, and you're just gonna like the the aim of the game is to gain. If that's the case, and if you're just like having or maintain, depending on if you're a high carb cuck, but if you're just having, you know, that's me. <laughs> if you're just having, yeah, it's, it's like it. Food quality is always gonna be there, but like totally. you, you gotta you gotta get stuff like you gotta get calories in, and therefore you might have to go some more dirty options. Um, also, if you enjoy it. And it's just, you know, it's oh. in moderation, then fucking enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, I get yeah. so fucking annoyed when people also identify like, um, especially like, oh, low carb or this, especially if, like, even like, don't have medical condition or anything like that. You're like, oh, identify as this, identify as that. It's just fucking religion. It's like, oh, I'm a fucking powerful, oh, I'm a fucking this, I'm a fucking that. It's like, just do other shit. Like, we can't all be, you can't pigeon this pigeonhole yourself into one thing. Like, go out there and try different stuff. And it might not be for you, but it's like, I don't know, at least you try it. Like, I feel like, all these people sprout nutrition. It's like, all right, well, Sand- Sandals has to maintain on like this amount of carbs. So what? So why the fuck are you gonna like say, oh, brother, the wheat bix is fucking a shit option? It's like, well, no. Put it in context. Or just like, yeah, like I, I don't know. It just got me a bit triggered. But no, nah, <laughs> yeah, def- <do> you- <laughs> definitely, man, <laughs> definitely. I just wanted to see if Chris, pause for a second. If Chris had some uh, something he wanted to get off his chest. <sighs> It's like we uh, attach uh, emotion and identity to food and uh, we, we become, anytime someone, you know, challenges or does something a little bit differently, then we become, there's a conflict inside of us. And so we, you gotta break it down like to the, to the chemistry of food. Like what, what is something like wheat bix? Like, okay. It's like a complex carbohydrate. What's that? Okay. It's a polysac it's a polysaccharide because they're starchy, starchy wheat. It's gluten free. Okay, we look at the ingredients and we're like we if we just break it down, like what is this actual thing? It may not be as bad as you're thinking, or it may be massively exaggerated. Like you look in the back of a nutrition panel and you see acidity regulators and you see like all these numbers, right? You know what that means? You know what each of those numbers means? Like more often than not, these preservatives are relatively safe at the quantities, the very, very small quantities they are. Because people might say, oh, it's got this preservative or that preservative or this coloring or that coloring. Like in the scheme and the totem pole of health, that's, it doesn't, it's not irrelevant totally, but in the scheme of health, it's probably not a very high on the hierarchy of the big rocks of like, okay, are you heating that protein? Is that protein from nutrient dense sources? Uh, are we getting a wide variety of foods and organ meats and oysters? Shout out to oysters. Some oh, people yeah. call me the oyster Love king, him. right? <laughs> you know the liver king? Have you seen the liver king? Def- oh. <laughs> Your boy is jacked to the gills. Yeah, he's done a couple of cycles. Just a couple. <laughs> Only a few. <laughs> Only a few. What's your opinion on liver king, Chris? Have quickly? you seen him? Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah. What do you reckon? He's got a bit of mass. <laughs> <laughs> He's carrying a bit of carrying a bit of just, uh, a little bit of mass on him. <laughs> uh, done well for himself. <laughs> no, he's just another. Oh, uh, he's promoting. I think that the message he comes down to is is relatively positive, um, of like ancestral eating and the principles of just eating more organ meats, which people should do, um, mostly. But yeah, man, we uh, we got to be careful about getting too attached to any one ideology or thing, you know, context. That's the game. It's a big thing, isn't it? In, a, in every aspect. It's like 
people get so attached to ide- ideologies or philosophies because it's so easy mm. because it's like oh well, i follow this and it makes it very simple but it's like it's much more scarier and much it's much more harder yeah. and it takes a lot more creativity to say i want a bit of that i want a bit of this i want a bit of that and then to formulate what you think you like and what works for you and i find that anytime i have a conversation with whether it be a coach nutritionist, or anything any aspect of life the people that have taken areas from other different you know ideologies philosophies are the ones that have succeeded so well and kind of create their own you know and create their own little uh ideology that has a mixture of different things right okay so in that case it's like it's an inspiration of many different things is that what you're saying yeah be careful even calling it an ideology it's like an ideology is like people get very attached to okay uh, principles yeah. a principle she, i like that principles yes i like that Shout out. <laughs> Shout out principles. But um, yeah, exactly right, man. It's exactly the same with training as well. People identify as one way and you just get caught in that trap and fuck, before you know it, you're, you're saying like, I'm only a powerlifter, um, above, five, above five reps is fucking cardio, this, that, like just talking absolute fucking shit. It's like- we're just God like, help you if you have to walk up some stairs. Oh, you're, you're screwed. I get so, <laughs> so fucking annoyed when people are like, Oh, eight reps is cardio. Oh, it's so hard. I'm like, shut the fuck up. All right? Fucking hell. Just, I guess... Oh, <laughs> shit. Time change for no regard. For no regard. For human life. You are... <laughs> like, fucking hell, man. Just like... <laughs> like, Can you hear that, Chris? Yeah. No, yeah, no, like, no, even, no. even just saying, like, oh... Uh, this is so hard. I can't. Well, then don't fucking do it. If you don't want to do something, don't do it. Don't complain that it's hard. Like you're doing shit and you're like, oh, this is so hard. I hate this. I can't do this. It's so. It's like, don't fucking do it then. This annoys me. You like, got people complaining to, to you personally? No, or just people you know of? <laughs> these are people I know of and uh, I'm not going to mention names, but. Um, I reckon you name some names, I'm man. I'm not going to name names. <laughs> <laughs> There's some stuff. <laughs> uh, <coughs> talk to, um, talk to dids a lot about this, but. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, the, it's, just, it's just like, fuck, man. It's You can always do bait. Like, I felt when I first started lifting, like, m- me doing fucking eight reps, I would say that. I'd be like, oh, it's cardio. But that was just because I was shit in shit cardio health and just I didn't do anything outside of lifting. Mm. Like, so I feel like you can always you can always improve that as well. And even just a little bit's going to help you as well. But I don't know why I got onto that. But, I mean, just about ideologies and stuff and yeah. just thinking you're one way when you can do a lot of different things and just that can enhance your life. Like, Doing different qualities like can always make you um, a better person in and out of you know training environment as well. But like obviously, if you're trying to go for like you know the pinnacle of your sport, um, sport power thing, but like or like I don't know, it might be ollie lifting and stuff like that. Like you you're gonna obviously gonna have to put a lot of time into uh, ollie lifting, Chris, if you want to be like the best. But and obviously you want to be the best. But do you care so much as to like you know risk relationships with families, uh, family sorry, loved ones, like fucking friends. Like, it's just, yeah. I know, that's a good question. Do you? Do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not going to risk that. I, yeah. love, I love my family. I love my friends. I'm not going to break What them. would you risk that for? <laughs> um, what is so important in your life that you would be willing to risk family, friends, and everything else? What is the number one priority that you would die for? Well, man, you got to think of it like this. If those family and those friends are the ones that support you and help you grow, I'm yeah. not risking that, bro. They're the ones that, why would I want to live? Like, for me especially, like, I don't want to go through life just by myself. I have these yeah. people who have been there with me. And all right, if they're, not, if they're not worth holding on to because of other issues, that's fine, man. But if you have family and friends that help you grow and have only improved your life, mm. no, nah, I'm not letting go of them. Mm. Because whatever aspect I do, I know they're going to help me. Yeah? We're not, we might not always get along, but I know if they've positively you know, improved my uh, other aspects of my life, no, nah, nothing. Nothing's taking me, letting them... Go away from me. That's a principle, man. That's a principle right there. Yep. It's a value that's very important to you. Yeah. Family and friends is huge to me. Huge. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Like, the man's very um, sociable and just... Um, I feel like, personally, like, just knowing him, um, he gets around everyone. Like, I'm very... Um, <laughs> I'm very introverted with a lot of people I first meet, but Chris is, like... Um, I think that's why we complement each other as well. Chris is very extroverted and very just outgoing and just, like... Um, even with the guys that I said, the gym, the clients that come through, he's very um, personable and always goes up to people. He'll have a good chat with them and stuff, and always gets to know them and stuff. And I feel like it's one of his best qualities. Like he's got, he's got a lot of, um, it's like he's given that a lot to me in terms of just like confidence. Like I'm taught, like I start to um, <laughs> shout out to Chris, but uh, yeah, like I try and um, 
even just with the people at the gym and even just people like us, you know, people that are mean stuff, I try and be a bit more like confident and stuff and like try and put out a lot more, um, you know, I actually want to be there in the moment. I actually want to like talk to them. Like they're the only person in the room and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's been awesome in terms of that, but, um, it felt like a bit of a compliment, but oh, thanks, man. no, well, it's just, it's true though. But like for me, man, like we're all in that gym, like we're all in it together. That's how I see it. Yeah. Like we're all in this room together, this small little fucking space. It's like we either work together, or we don't. And in the day when you don't work together, that's when issues arise. So I'm going to try to talk to someone, I'm going to try to connect with them on any aspect that I can because in the day, we're all humans and don't tell me you can't connect someone, connect with someone. There's always something that you can find, yeah? You just need to dig a little bit deeper, yeah? Um, so for me, man, it's huge. Personal connection's a big thing and once, once we start to develop that with anyone that walks through the doors, like we can go anywhere, yeah? We can work together. I might not necessarily be always the right person to help you, but I'm going to be there for you and find a way to guide you where you need to go. Mm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's how that's beautiful. we've gotten um, a lot more people coming through our doors. Like I feel, obviously, it's like um, Woody's the main figurehead of the company. It's obviously his company, but I feel like um, yeah, people like Dirk, um, people like George, people like Tommy, um, Manov, uh, yeah, Jay, um, sweet Jay Edmonds. Um, it's those guys and Brayden as well. We'll give everyone a shout out. Um, it's just being more personable and just like wanting um, the best for your clients and like actually giving a fuck about what they do and just enjoying being there with them. Like I used to be um, a couple of years ago on the floor where I just, some shifts I just didn't want to be there. Um, I was tired and whatnot. So I feel like now it's just, it's just a fun training environment. It's just a fun environment to be in. Like we've got people fucking staying, you know, for four hours and um, a couple of the uh, kids are coming. Like you met them as well. Like, um, Nathan Bennett, those guys, you know, the kids that were like lifting fucking heavy weights. Yeah. I mean, they they want to be there, man. They want to actually like that, like, <laughs> like they train and then they want to stay during our session and just watch um, us train as well. And they'll like ask us questions and stuff. So it's just the. You're elders. You are acting yeah, as elders and that's, to these young, young boys. It's and a very sacred role. I know. I actually like, um, yeah, I was pretty uh, chuffed about that, to be honest. Like, yeah, should be. Well, obviously, like, um, the coaches them and stuff, but it's it's cool, man. Like just getting people, like um, <laughs> just even <clears throat> even the way we um <laughs> just shout each other shout at each other in the gym and just hype each other up. Like they do the same sort of thing. They're just like very aggressive when they go at the bar and stuff like that. Well, it just amazes me. And I remember you told me this a couple of years ago, Alex. And so I wanted to bring it up right now because it makes sense. Um, when you said when your athletes aren't with you, that's a great representation of who you are as a coach and what you can. I said that to you. Display onto someone, yes. I remember a lot of things she, you said to me. Come on, brother. Nice, man. man you've been a big mentor for me. Come on. Spit on some fire, brother. Man, you've been a great mentor for me. But yes, shout out to Alex Sandals, mate. <laughs> he's, he's been a huge mentor. Don't tell him enough, but I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. But a Tuesday morning, Brick and I aren't in. We're both a bit later and they usually still come in the morning. And there was a couple of videos I've seen and I've said it before where they just, they created this atmosphere. And I got messages from other clients saying, wow, these 15, 14 year old kids created an atmosphere. They were g everyone up. They weren't being silly. They were being, they were, they were on point. Yeah, sometimes they do make mistakes. We drill them, yeah, safely. Um, and then, <laughs> but when, when, they, when we're not there, how well they act and how well they create the atmosphere. When we don't even, have, we can sit back mm. and that's autonomy, man. They, they know what to do. And that, that amazed me. That amazed me and Brick, and I felt like that was a big proud moment for us as a as a duo, as colleagues to see <laughs> to see um you know the clients progress to create an atmosphere where we don't even need to be there and there's still that fire. Yeah, if you want to come down the wood, for, come down. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just we got memberships flying off yeah. the shelves. You, uh, at Woodford SSC, you want to you want to come down and just be coached by one of us. Um, <laughs> well, nah, yeah, you go so. Well, no, I think. I think it's, it's actually important because, you know, what we're talking about now, we're talking about WSSC as a family, right? For me, my perspective changed once we really started to grow as a family where it's, it's a fucking privilege to yeah. walk in through those doors and be part of the family. So now, and also Alex Sandals taught me this as well. Shout out to Alex again. <laughs> we're talking about uh, when you're trying to bring someone in, right? When you're chatting to someone, they first consult with you. It's not just about how can you help them? Are they the right fit for you? Absolutely. And that was a bit, it blew, me, blew my mind away because I was like, okay, when someone sits down now, it's like, do you fit into our WSC family? Mm. Some people don't. 
And I'm, it's like, you gotta be straight up about it. And I learned the same thing at Athletes Authority when I went there recently, that people aren't always gonna fit in with your principles and that's fine. Don't just try to reel people in because they're the ones that affect that family. Yeah. And now we've created such a good family. Like we've got a really good family here. Yeah, that everyone gets around, everyone knows each other, everyone helps each other. That it's like, you wanna sit down, do you, do you fit into this family? Yeah, can you help boost this atmosphere? If you're not, then unfortunately, we're not the right fit for we're you. Not for you. That, that's it. Well, we were in a position, um, we're, sorry, we're in a position now where we can do that. We can go, <laughs> yeah, just not a part of what we sort of want here in terms of our vision and whatnot of just what we want this place to be. <laughs> so um, that's a good thing for us, at least. We can like sort of, you know, pick and choose certain people. Um, but you're saying, well, I want to know um, in terms of athletes' authority, what were the key sort of takeaways you got? from that um, mentorship because um, from what I saw as well, especially like on social media and online, you took a lot of good things away from it. You were definitely like, what you know, sitting at the front, real nerd shit. I uh, fucking love that. Th- that. This man would definitely do that. You have no I idea. Can... The people are so self-conscious about sitting in the front of the room. He doesn't give a fuck, man. No. He does, he That's does not why care. you win. Yeah. Yeah. Shit flying everywhere. Like, oh shit. Like, yeah, oh shit. That's why people win, okay? Yeah. And I resonate with it because I was that guy, right? So there's some bias right here, yeah. but I would force myself to sit at the front of classrooms in high school and in university because what the fuck am I here for? Yeah. Shit, man. Like, what the fuck? I didn't fly all the way over there, spend money, I uh, invest myself into this workshop to go sit in the fucking back and act like a cool kid on my fucking Instagram. That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ, but I want to fucking take, cause you know what? It's not about whether you agree with everything they say. It's about taking in all the information and then you create your own yeah, system. Your own system, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about it. They weren't saying you need to follow this. Yeah. And I shout out to them. They they said, this is what we do. Yeah. You, like, you like, you don't, you don't. Yeah, cool. This is it. This is what we do. And they, did, they didn't leave a fucking fact out. Mm-hmm. And that's what I loved about it. It's not like, this is the only way. It was that this is our way. This is what worked for us. Not always going to work, but this is every single fact we have done. Here you go. And I was like, okay. And you asked me before, what was a great lesson I learned? And this is where we've done it, but I really never understood what we did. And it was the word autonomy. And I said it before, autonomy is just a principle that just, it blows my mind because for an athlete to come in the door, I hate, and we did, we've discussed this before, like, we don't spoon feed people. And I feel like we do in life too much. Everyone gets like spoon fed. I feel like you come through the door. I'm not going to leave you hanging like with a program. Good luck. But if you can't write your weights in yourself, like, but you want to be an elite athlete. Yeah. You want to go to Europe. You want to go fucking live by yourself and become a professional athlete, but you can't even fucking write your weights in. Like, good luck, bro. Like it's just, it's simple principles to take in charge. Yeah. I'm not going to babysit you and say, are you coming at nine o'clock? You book him for fucking nine o'clock. You're coming at nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Simple. You rock up at 10. Where the fuck were you? Yeah, don't come late. You know, that's, that's your, these are the uh, aspects that I realize athletes are throwing you well. You book in, you come then. If you fucking book in and you don't come in, you get a fine. I was like, fuck. I like that. You know what I mean? I'm not oh, necessarily saying we have fine, to do that. Fuck. Yeah. Jeez. But I'm saying like what I love is there's autonomy because in the, the day you're working with athletes regardless of their goal, they have goals. Yeah, we're an athletic performance center. Whether it be weekend warriors, uh, um, semi-professional, professional, right? People have goals and they want to achieve them. And the best way to do that is to stand by your principles, create consistency. And that's where autonomy, right, is so important because if you can't wake up in the morning and get yourself to do it, well, that's the problem. I realise that our job isn't about making someone do something. It's about guiding someone to get to where they need to be. Right. No, I don't go and make you a better athlete. I guide you with what I can with my education, with my coaching experience to help you find the right path. But if you don't want to fucking do it, you're not going to do it. So if you don't develop autonomy, you don't develop the ability to walk in those doors, remember, listen to the warm-ups, nothing wrong with asking questions, but taking in what you can and trying to better yourself, then I can't do it. I literally can't do it for you. And if you don't want to do it, then what's the point? So the biggest thing I learned from them is they develop autonomy. And I feel like we do as well, but I never really understood it. How do we explain it? What are we trying to do? And it made sense. So now when I work with athletes, when they come through the doors, I'm like, when you come in here, you know, you, you need to want to be here. And if you don't want to, then you're not at the right place for us. Because, That's right. Because everyone who comes through those doors at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., whatever time it be, they want to get better. Yeah? 
They want to do what they can to get better. And there'll be funny parts along the way. There'll be, there'll be real life genuine moments. But at the end of the day, everyone's there to work. Everyone's there to get better. Everyone's there to achieve a goal. Yeah? So that's a huge thing I learned. That's some fucking good shit. I, um, well, I think even like from my own training experiences at uh, Strength Culture, that's literally what you said is what they say as well, man. Like it's you don't want to spoon feed people. I've been like guilty of spoon feeding people in the past as well. But you, as you said, you want to get people like to the point where they can justify their own training decisions and their own training loads. Why have I chosen this weight? For example, if I'm feeling like fucking shit, um, not great. Why would I go up in a higher load if my RPEs are higher than normal? This is where RPE versus percentage based training. They're like, oh, uh, 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 the percentage based training. I need to load fucking eight five percent on the bar. And it's gonna. It's like that's fucking stupid. Yeah, exactly. Because now, what if I have had a shit sleep? Uh, dogs died. Um, I'm in a fight with my fucking girlfriend. Feeling like absolute fucking ass. And I rock up to the gym, boys. Eighty five percent loaded on, and it's and it's fucking like I move it. And I literally can't move it because it's fucking stable to the ground. Oh, yeah, that was a good justification of the decision. It's like, look, it's both work, but this is why I use RPE personally because it, reg- it auto-regulates in terms of on the day. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have some days where that are better than others and you're going to ride the wave when you want to do it as well. So, like, I feel like that's why for our athletes as well, Chris, we sort of uh, tell them this is why, all, like, they might do, a, like, a lift, and we're like, oh, great, how'd that feel? They're like, it mm, was a bit hard. Now, I might look at bar speed because of how they move. I'm like, bruh, you had fucking five more reps there. Oh, my God. That, and that, like, and it's I've been... So <laughs> often, bro. I've been guilty in the past of just going, yeah, load the bar up and it just fucking... <laughs> it's, it's a bit how you going. But, um, yeah. But I, you need to push it. So, you need to push sometimes it, you, Sometimes you do need to push it. I had a, I had a chat with a client about this as well, and he, um, he felt that some of the stuff that I was doing in terms of like load management wasn't the best. I was like, look, I can definitely understand where you're coming from, but these are my justifications for pushing you in terms of these lifts. Um, he thought you were taking them too aggressively? I f- he thought I was taking them too aggressively in terms of like load selection. He had a background in sports science or something or training, uh, coaching? Well, that was just his personal opinion. His personal opinion. Okay, go on. And I, and I like respect that. I'm like, yeah, cool. This is why I'm choosing these weights for you. Um, because we were building up to like a one RM sort of testing and like a peak. So I was like, look, probably got to handle a bit more heavier loads in terms of your training and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I can definitely understand where he was coming from as well. But that's here nor there. But um, yeah, just in terms of training system, I feel like it lends itself well um, to us at Woodford because we're not your fucking parents. We're not going to be like just watching over you all the time and just telling you certain things. Like you got to fucking, in terms of training autonomy, in, in terms of like in the gym, you might go on holidays. We're not fucking there. So we can't tell you these are the weights we want every single time. You've got to um, have a brain and sort of suss it out for yourself. And that's where we become get better as fucking like coaches and stuff because we don't need to watch fucking 40 people doing a squat. And then we're like, oh, yeah, I reckon this was, this was good. And then watch it again. And like you, you give people more training autonomy. They actually understand what they're doing. They have the knowledge to able to select better training loads or have the knowledge to go up to go down. So we might have people on their second set, if they got three sets, their second set of, say, five reps, they go up and it's like, oh, that was a bit of a fucking shit second set. Um, that might have been a load, you know, too high for this day. Back it down on the last set. or like, the, And there's tons of different contexts as well. But we tell all the young kids as well, this is why we're choosing um, certain weights, so this is why we're choosing these loads for you because of, for example, you might have a game coming up. You might have this coming up. So, yeah, I feel like on Chris's point, on that long point uh, by me, um, yeah, it's just training autonomy, man. And just like um, that, that's how we can get more people through the door as well because we don't need to watch fucking just so many people doing one thing. We're like, okay, we can like circle over and just like it's, it's a better training environment as well because we're not just stuck there for an hour. Like we can sort of move around and have some fun, just enjoy. Um, and also yeah. Yeah, a so. great post you did. Recently as well. Shout out to Alex Sanders again. <laughs> Jeez, um, fuck. He's getting all these shout outs here. What the fuck, man? Right. Shout, all these shout outs, but no one... It, let's, say, let's say no one knows who I am, right? Who the fuck is Alex Sandals? <laughs> who the fuck <laughs> is that guy? Google that guy. Guy is Sandals. <laughs> a, 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 pyra- a pyramid. Or a goddamn desert will come up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Fuck it. Um, what were you going to say? A great post you made recently when it was... We're talking about when it's busy, you can only give a cue. You got five seconds to give a fucking cue. Oh, yeah. And I, I really like that because 
you know, we love atmosphere. We love energy. But having fucking three people in the gym doing mm-hmm. a little semi-private doesn't create that. No. Yeah. You need, you need more people. You need atmosphere. You need energy. You need people moving around the gym. But then how do you control that? Now, autonomy is one. And two, another thing is give them a simple cue. Let them fucking think of it. Like Brick said, you don't have to watch their squat. Every, you know, watch a couple reps. Find the main issue that you believe can help them. And that comes with experience, of course. Give it to them. Let them sit on it. Let them think about it. Let them play around with it. Because if you watch one rep and you're like, no, nah, you fucked it up again. You're like, we haven't even let them think about it and try it. Give them a cue. Let them play around with the cue. Like seeing one rep and then say, no, nah, that cue didn't fucking work. It's like, hold on a second. Like our, we're, our bodies and minds are pretty resilient. We kind of so- sort ourselves out pretty well. One, and that's what I say as coaches, we guide people. Mm. We don't make people do things. I don't just make you do a squat. I guide you in a way with cues, with positions, with constraints that allow you to squat better. And that takes time. And that's why it's fucking uh, our job's all about longevity. I don't fucking improve you in a week, a month, a couple of months. Yeah, it takes time to get real to really get improvement. So when I'm improving your fucking squat, when I'm improving your, you know, your speed mechanics, whatever it be, right? I'm gonna give you a cue. I'm gonna let you sit on it, think about it, play around with it. Yeah, I'll come back. I'll watch. Okay. Yeah, it's improving a little bit. That's cool. Let's keep working on it. Yeah. So I find the biggest thing is the biggest thing to take away from is. Get your big groups, let people sit on cues, let them play around with it, yeah? And obviously that's going to come with experience, understanding what cues going to work. And sometimes they won't work, but you never know if you don't let people play around with it. Let them figure it out. Let them figure it out, exactly. People got to sort themselves out, even with running, right? Like, I'm not going to make someone run better by just saying, yep, knee up, put, yep, heel there, you know? Give them a constraint, give them a cue, yeah. let them kind of put themselves in position. And then over time, you'll see their bodies figure it out mm-hmm. because- you know, the cause and effect. Jay Ellis always talks about cause and effect, yeah? The effect isn't always what you need to work on. There's a cause behind something. So if you can start to work on that cause, naturally over time, the f- effect will, you know, improve. And that's a big thing, yeah? So it's like, rather than just saying, no, it's the effect, let's keep working on the effect. Give them a cue, work on the cause, and then over time, their bodies will figure it out, sort themselves out. Totally. That, that cause and effect, I don't know if there's something you wanted to say for a second. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I had okay. some, then I lost it. Okay. <laughs> the cause and effect is huge in the health and we're like beyond just like coaching one on one. But like, how often do we look at a symptom? It's like, oh, I'm feeling this way, and then we just put a band aid on it. Oh, here are some anti. Here are some. Uh, what's the band aid solution? Um, people acid reflux, so they give people antacid. They give people like uh, stomach acid blockers, which are just fucking terrible most of the time, okay? We can explain why that is later if we want. IBS cucks. Oh, <laughs> oh this rampant. <laughs> rampant, bro. People gassy, bloating, yeah. diarrhea, constipated. Like this is people listening, like at least 50% of the people listening right now have experienced this or experiencing this right now, right? So it's very relevant. And we throw band-aids at them. We do these fucking... Uh, gut um we do like buy one product one like product to try and like solve all our problems without getting to the root cause or we'll think this magic herb or spice i'll put some fucking cinnamon in your yogurt you'll be okay it's anti-inflammatory it's gonna probably take a little more than that and we want to address the root christochronus cause of the ailment of what's going on if someone comes in with cancer unfortunately we don't ask why did you get cancer Cancer is very complex, right? I'm just giving an example. There are certain uh, pathways, there are certain uh, associations and causalities to why people get Alzheimer's, to why people uh, have predispositions for diabetes, right? What's going on here? Let's get to the cause. Otherwise, we're just going to keep putting band-aids on everything. Interesting. Some could say that's how the last couple of years were handled or have been handled. There's a lot of Band-Aid yeah. solutions <laughs> instead of, huh? I wonder. I'm just curious. I'm just- Anti-vax cucks. <laughs> <laughs> just chatting about the issues. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious- Lizard people. How many, how prevalent uh, the current issues would be if the large majority of people, 80 to 90%, were of a healthy BMI and exercised frequently, considering that the average death of someone uh, has at least four comorbidities. I'm just curious. I'm just curious if there, that wasn't the case. You know what I'm saying? So root cause, Q, Q cause, effect. Because I always like to like, how can we extend? Because we get very narrow in like strength and conditioning and coaching, right? We get super narrow. We get obsessed with like, 
arm action. Ooh, <laughs> what about heel turnover? Ah, oh, man, his heel turnover is a little too high. And where that's so deep in the hole, or, or like, or you can go really specific with like biochemistry of like one certain pathway of like methionine or some, just some nerd shit, real nerd shit. And we're so deep in that we, f- that we forgot that we were in a hole. Well, that's a big thing where I'm like, a big belief of mine is be aware of these things, yeah. but don't necessarily implement everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's good to be aware of someone's heel action. Yeah. Like what's happening. Yeah. But in the day, just understanding what's happening, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to fix that. Cause then in the day, fuck, we're all different. We're all our own individuals. The way we all fucking run, the way we all move is going to be very different. You know, and you're going to have your bandwidth. And that's a big thing that, you know, I've learned from a lot of amazing coaches, including both of you here, is that, you know, a bandwidth is so important. A bandwidth. A bandwidth. Yeah. Of everything. Everything. Like of neutral spine within a deadlift. People freak out. Oh, Oh, (laughs) Ouch. Man. McGill. <laughs> no. McGill, your dog. No, Straight it up. please, no. <laughs> <laughs> what a show. I've got to watch that again. Get back on that fucking ground and do some more laying leg raises. Oh. Side blank. Brother, your knee Third comes dog. in during a squat. Fucking regress it. Get on the broomstick. <laughs> do another fucking 20 Get reps. Get a fucking mini bender. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> Uh, oh, but so, did you see what Stuart McGill? Sorry, real quick, Stuart McGill. Uh, not Stuart McGill. It was Andrew Locke. He posted this video of one guy's knee valgusing in, and he we were very heavy yeah. loads, shit shoes, and he just crumbled. He, did you see that? He just yeah, I did see that. Okay, yeah. it's yeah. worst case scenario. But you can cherry pick that. There's tons of different things where it's like, oh, his knee comes in, and it's like, oh, actually, well, you know, uh, we're fucking knees in his knees and actually work and stuff. Like, uh, knee valgus could happen. This yeah. Also, there is knee valgus, but. Knees in is what's going to happen. Like, this is what I've learned as well. Knees mm-hmm. in is what's going to happen during a squat as well. Like, as you're doing a movement, going from IR to ER, back to IR. So, internal rotation. For those who do, yeah, okay. Sorry, internal rotation. Not everybody rot- a sports scientist out here. Yeah, so not everyone's like me going to VQ, fucking three years, <laughs> got a degree. Um, the, mainly gone to Deacon. But, like, um, yeah, so going to internal rotation, back to external rotation, back to internal rotation. So, you see a lot of, like, weightlifters and stuff, powerlifters, will go primarily into a, obviously into a, like a knees in because it's going to allow you to lift more weight as well. And like, obviously Squat University has a lot of great information, but he's going to be like, look, every single rep needs to be quality technique. And you go, okay, well, what is our definition of great technique? Mm. It's going to be different for many people. So for example, with the flexed um, spine during a deadlift. Now I've got a, a friend, um, uh, Chich, Ben the Chochio, I, I don't know if I say his name correctly. <laughs> but I didn't would just call Chich. Chich. Chich the dog. Full name. Now he has a fucking very flexed spine when he's deadlifting. Um and obviously you coached him, Alex, and you've seen his spine deadlifting. And for some people they watch his spine like, ah oh, no, he's got a fucking flexed spine. <laughs> Fuck! He's gonna break! He's gonna break! Fucking hell, watch your back yet. Ooh. You're talking, oh, hey, oh, oh. Like Fuck. there Bones goes the back. He's out for 12 months, boys. <laughs> Can't but walk like, again. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like, but then some people watch it. Like, um, for example, you watch a powerlifter. And I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of lifters of strength culture who do primarily powerlifting. Look at their back. You look at their, like, spine position. And they're fucking flexed. Because it's going to allow you to lift more weight. Because if you're in a flexed spine, mm. the aim of the game of powerlifting is lift the most weight. Now, for obviously for, you know, gem pop clients, even just for general sort of things, you might go more um, a neutral spine depending on their sort of bandwidth in terms of technique. But for me, I don't mind a bit of a flex spine unless you're like, I actually need to work on, um, you know, I have a lot of back issues and I need to focus on more of a neutral spine. Okay, cool. We'll try and work on that. But I think the biggest thing is, is the two things you got to look at when looking position I just is get so mad. compensation and tension. Like if someone's in a flex spine position, and they're holding good shape, and they use it. They have great. Yeah. They have great 100%. distribution of load management across all the critical muscles. Then I'm like, I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. But if like if someone's started in a neutral spine, like in that bandwidth, and then they've they've broken across as they you know they create leaks in energy, you know, localized spinal movement as they're lifting up. That's it. You just said it. Yeah. Localized, localized, spinal. localized spinal yeah. movement. She okay. tell them again. Exactly. <laughs> tell them again. Localized. Spinal. <laughs> There's a difference between a localized movement. spinal movement that occurs acutely during movement versus staying stably flexed throughout that movement, like Atlas Stone lifting uh, strongman. Exactly. They have flex backs. Oh, oh regress, brother. Regress back to the bar. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing with a flex spine? I told you once and I'm going to tell you again, all right? 
It's, it's fucking stupid. Like, fuck's sake, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. And that's where it's called. That's where tension is a big principle. It's like, okay, if you're still holding tension, you're not leaking energy, yeah. and you're loading up the muscles you want. Tick. Yeah. If you're compensating and you're over. You, you know, you dish me load to certain muscles more than others, and then you're creating localized spinal movement. Yeah. So you're breaking and you're losing tension. Okay, yeah, we got an issue. And why that's an issue is because that's when we see increased risk of vertebral issues. We see slip discs, we see herniated discs. That's when the localized spinal flexion, as shown by Stuart McGill, um, Andrew Locke, that's when it become an issue. But if you look here, we see the beautiful uh, diagram by um, physique.com. I show this to my students. Neutral is a range, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. There's a bandwidth and a nice little one on, I haven't seen this one before. Is a butt wink bad when squatting? Well, it depends. Yeah, and it, this is why it's so funny because you're right. We do, be get, we do get so narrow yeah. with S and C. Like, is butt wink good or bad? Stop fucking asking yes or no questions. Like bandwidth, like range is so important with everything, right? with the goal you're trying to achieve with, okay, what's actually happening? To what extent is that happening? Like, it's not as simple as yes or no, you know? Well, or, or just like video your lifts and just video your lifts and you can just like, you can um, uh, create sort of an auto feedback. Like you can yeah. sort of suss it out and go, okay, well, maybe I wasn't like um, internally rotating a bit more in terms of like rib position or something like that. It's just, yeah, I feel like, and so it's, it's it's all like the nocebo approach. Like people just get caught up in like, if anything deviates from a slight technique issue, it's, it's all making gonna be bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like they just go, no, nah, it's the reps fucked. Yeah, like, it's already done. It's like no, we'll it's fucking fine. yeah, like relax, take a bit of a chill pill, and just understand like this is why we're sort of doing it. Um, and you know the body's it's resilient. Know, it's resilient, it's adaptable. That's why I like showing Great diagrams like this. Okay, yeah. extension and flexion is a very common position for the spine to be in. Context matters. Same before, but fucking exactly right. <laughs> exactly. And this is a big thing that we've got to understand is we're not saying movement efficiency isn't crucial. We're just saying there's always going to be a bandwidth, you know, so not being so critical all the time and saying, oh, you fucked up one round, this is the end of the world. Go, go to fucking hospital right now. It's like, okay, what happened? We're here to guide you. There's going to be issues. There's not everything's going to look perfect along the way. Yes, we're always going to look for this optimal. We're always going to be trying to go there, which we'll never get, but that's okay. But we just got to be aware as coaches that not everything's going to be perfect. We've had chats with Woody about this. Like he'll watch um, people lifting in the gym and he'll say certain things in terms of like technique and stuff. And we're like, well, this is why we're getting them to lift in a certain way or like why we're getting a bit more flex back. Um, at the you know in setup because we want them to lift a bit more and we feel like it helps them in terms of the reps like you know and why can't we strengthen through flexion? Oh well, yeah, well, what's <laughs> going on? Uh, is that not a range your spine can do? If you do it intentionally, what's wrong with that? Well yeah, well that that's what that's fucking powerful. That's literally you try and create the least amount um, of range because you're going to lift the most amount of weight. So therefore, yeah. obviously it's going to be a bit harder at lockout trying to deadlift it and having a flex back, but it's still fine. Like, cause it get, it's in terms of like off the floor, it's a lot better. Like it's, it, it's so much fucking no SIBO approaches and just like training hard is what, is what matters as well. Obviously training smart, but training hard is what matters. It's, when get, it's what's going to get results. It's what going to, it's what is going to lay to lift, um, it's found a way as well, improve in terms of like hypertrophy strength. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't I think, know what else you have to say. That, but. I think just the biggest thing you need to take out of this is as long as you can fucking justify why you're doing something. Um, but it better have logical, we say that a lot, but it better have logical justification yeah, log, too. I was about to say yeah, logical yeah, yeah. justification yeah. and um, anecdotal uh, justification that you've seen it Um or you've, you've spoken about it with someone who has seen it, that has experience with it in the actual real world, mm -mm. then yes, okay. of course. Yeah. Then I think that you can implement things like that. Don't just listen to us and be like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to bend my back now because why not? <laughs> well, me, me and Dirk can all argue about certain things as well. Like we'll look at a lift and we'll have two different interpretations of it. Like um, it's, yeah, I feel like there's no... Why, like obviously there's a certain criteria in terms of lifting, but there can also be different circumstances. And then you said context matters. It's like, why are people doing certain things? Um, so yeah, like, 
it, it is what it is. Like, what's more important to you two, working hard or working smart? Mixture, for personally, well, because you got to remember, like, working smart is crucial, right? Because in the, end of the day, you can always work hard. You can have you know you work, but if you're not working smart, like, say, let's put it for sprinting, right? If you're in a shit position, but you're working hard, you're fucking drilling in the ground. You're out, you might have high output, but you might fucking dissipate a lot of it because you might be overstriding and breaking a lot of your force, right? So efficiency is crucial there. But if you don't have any fucking sort of aggression, um, you know, any sort of intent, intent come on. Yeah, then like, fuck it. Bro, you're not going to fucking go anywhere. Like, I can create a good fucking position where I elongate my leg. I have a good fucking, you know, positive shin angle. But if I don't have a fucking intent in the ground, I'm not actually projecting myself. I like sprinting as an example of this. Yeah. So efficiency is crucial because that will dictate how well you express your output. But if there's no intent, your output's not high and you can create good positions, but you're not actually going anywhere. <laughs> listen, yeah, I feel like training hard can lead to training smart as well. So yeah. if you train hard, you understand what you can do in terms of your body. You know how hard you can push yourself as well. Most people just need to learn how to train hard. That's pretty much the first step. I, I think that's, yeah. Tra training yeah. training yeah. is literally, you need to understand yeah. what training hard is. Yeah. And like, I never got that. Um, I got that with Jay Ellis when he was coaching me, training hard and actually like understanding like, fuck me. If I actually like, because um, he, he wrote a great plan as well, but he actually told, like he was telling me, this is why we're choosing these weights and I want you to push hard every single set. I want you to like, um, for our heavy sets, give it your all. And just see what happens. And like as for culture as well, the number one issue that people have is that people fucking undershoot, they sandbag sets, or they just go, um, you know, they don't train hard. So they might do like a, a set and they say it's an RPE seven. And it's like, fuck, can't it's an RPE five. Like you got fucking so much more in the tank. And that's what um, I feel like I can say I train hard because um, if you've seen me train, I train hard. Like I, I fucking push myself. Like heavy sets, I'm like, fuck, man, I'm going to, like, what he does, he fucking pushes hard in training. I've seen him. He's, um, he doesn't shut the fuck up. He's very just fucking boisterous and stuff. And he's, he's yelling. He's just, eh, sometimes too much. I'm like, Dirk, just could have calmed down. I'm doing, like, an easy set. But, like, <laughs> and I love him, though. But, um, yeah, like, uh, that's the main issue. People just have to train hard first, and then you can train smart. I actually really like that. Never heard that one before. But you know what? That's a fuck that you justify that. Really well, <laughs> Thank actually, you. and I think I totally That's agree with that. That's actually awesome <laughs> because in the day, like within the safe region and with c quality guidance, yeah, you sometimes you do need to fucking work hard. Because how the fuck do you know how to work smart? What? That's what, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I that's like it. that. Like people want to people want to get obsessed with. Let's help to biohack and work smart, right? Go on, step, brother. You got to get up at four a.m. and fucking do this. And uh, I'm doing all this. I'm, I'm working hard. I'm on the fuck. I'm, I'm running, doing this. It's like no, have a fucking thing about why you're training hard. Yeah, I interrupt you there. So no, I want you to go. Oh, I just oh fucking grind. I'm grinding, brother. Like, but um, yeah. So no, it's fucking. What you're saying is 100 true. Like. You know, we're not saying go out, bolts the wall, don't sleep for fucking a week and don't eat, you don't deserve it. Like, like we're saying with your plan, with quality guidance, <laughs> in a safe manner, kind of just fucking send it. Sometimes work hard. Within reason though. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Within that's what reason, we're saying. We're not saying know? just send it, just send no, it. No, I'm saying I am. I say, I fucking, I'm saying sometimes right, yeah. I want your soul to leave your fucking body. <laughs> like when I was doing sauna today and we were pushing, yeah. right? I was... I was starting to, you start to push so hard sometimes you're like, huh, how long would I have to stay in here to pass out? And then you go like, <laughs> how long would I have to stay in here to die? Like eventually those thoughts start to come into your mind when you start to push. It's like, hmm, how much can I go? Like I remember watching a Rogan video and he was in the ice bath for a long time, right? And, and he was getting concerned about that. And there's a lot to learn about being a human being on this planet and what your purpose is in life and your character. What are you made from? Are you made from sand or are you made from concrete? Are you breakable or are you soft, right? Or are you solid? So I think there's, you got to intersplice the working smart, working hard with moments of, you know, I'm trying to see God. <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to dig to the depths. Well, that's where AMRAP sets are good as well. Like ah, in the training yes. sense as well. Like, it's you versus the bar. What are you going to do? 
You gonna call? You gonna yell at it? Just call it a little fucking pussy? What do we used to say? It's like don't walk up to the bar and say yeah. fucking I. <laughs> call it a fuckwit. It's a piece of call shit. Call it a fucking slut. <laughs> you call it whatever you need to call it. Uh, you need to do what you need to do. I hope my. <laughs> Hey, my parents don't listen to this. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Jeremy, n- no, <laughs> no family listen to this podcast. Well, I'll listen to it for Alex. Don't listen to me. Just call me. <laughs> do, does your uh, do your parents have a certain um, some more traditional? I think parents have a problem with profanity. How uh, do your parents feel? Do they say don't swear, Jeremy? They, look, they I swear. Don't swear, Christopher. I, I swear. And when I say something, Are you good. Nah, bro, my family fucking swears oh. more than I do. That's where I copped it from. <laughs> my whole fu- people come into my household, everyone's like, yeah, fuck. And it's like, everyone's like, oh, Jesus, don't do that. I'm like, yeah, mate, my household fucking flows around too much. I think I'm me sure. dropping a hard C word is pretty, um, <laughs> mum, that, mum, and, mum doesn't like that. That'll get the ears perked up. Yeah, dad, dad's, um, dad's all right, but he's fine. Within reason. Like, you know, you're saying it with love and with passion. <laughs> with intent and purpose. Exactly. I think people can use words lazily. Like we just say the wor- yeah. words for the sake of 100%, it. 100%, yeah. Words matter. Words matter. Uh, yeah. Hey, um, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> hashtag words matter. So, well, yeah, if I call someone a fucking... <laughs> see, at, at the gym, I've called people just like hard, <laughs> hard C words during sets. Hard. hard. No, hard. we need that. But like, we need that's good. I've said, come on. Come on, you cunt. Yeah. And um, and now it sounds whatever, right? But when you're during yeah. the suffering and pain, like that's helpful. Well, fuck, man. It's just like you got to go. As you said, man, you got to go to dark places. Like you got to go if you're if the bar's loaded up, is loader up. Um, it's an inside joke. They load up with two eighty or something like that on a deadlift, and I haven't lifted that before. And I'm going for that in comp. I need to fucking just oh. immerse myself in that in that challenge and just go fucking. This is coming the fuck up. Just switch on whatever primal um, things I need. Yeah, and it's like this is fucking. Coming you got to go to. Chimp, you gotta yeah. go. You gotta go oh, real chimpanzee. I have to go chimp as fuck and just go fucking. This you gotta be chimp strong and just yell and just like slap, you know, slap people. Just you know, yeah. you <laughs> go into a fucking different universe, bro. Like when, like, see, I always say this to people: when you watch someone go for, like, say, we're talking oil lifting for now, but whatever sport, yeah. Mm-hmm. When you look at someone go up to that bar, like you know that little path at five meters, right? Mm-hmm. You think, ah, oh, he's just walking up to it. Nah. Fuck, oh, like it's legit, like. Full tunnel vision to that fucking bar. Mm. There's fucking like, there's energy, there's fire. Like, I can't even fucking think. Like, from anecdotal experience, man, like, especially when I get G'd up, fuck, man, I don't even know what the fuck's happening. Like, all I can see is a fucking bar, a bit of chalk on my hands. Like, I'm getting aggressive. Like, man, you gotta, you gotta. And that's, and that's when I've been like that, I've succeeded and I've gotten, you know, I, I've pushed past that point because, especially, I always say to people, I love this. What, when you wanna lift, a max of PB, right? A beyond your max, sorry. You're doing say 110, 120%, 105%, whatever it be, over a hundred percent. You cannot act the way you did when you're at a hundred percent. You have to get more because that's if the only you way. Did, if you did act the same way, you could argue there's more. Yes. There's still more in the tank. Exactly. And that's when you find out that out. But I'm saying when someone goes up to it, I'm like, you need to find something more than you did when you hit a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, create more energy, create more, you know, more aggression, whatever it be, something. Find something more than you did at 100%. Find it at 110%. You know what I mean? And I hate when people just, you know, walk up to it very lazy. There's no energy flowing and then they miss it and they're like, oh, why do I do that? I said, you walked up to it like you did when you warm up with the, bar, the 20 kilo bar. I said, find something different. Mm. Yeah? Life or death. But it, it's, it's tricky because if you remember from psychology, uh, you'll remember that everybody's arousal, optimal arousal course, levels are different. Course. So I know, I can, I've known this from basketball. I can, I g myself up too much and I, my motor skills become poorer. So I become to like become like twitchy and with a fine motor skill uh, sport like basketball, it's too much. Weightlifting, I actually like, it's, it's, so, it's really good because it's the same movement motor pattern every time. And I can afford to G the fuck up, high arousal and go. Olympic lifting, I think could be tricky because it's, it's yeah, yeah, that's more it's a more complex component. motor skill. Yeah. And, but, you know, cause I noticed some people like for, even for myself, like I don't always like to be, uh, I gotta be careful about my arousal levels. And I, I sometimes I just, I, I'll look pretty calm, right? And I'll, you has gotta be careful about getting too high. Uh, 
it's like it's, it's like you can cross the threshold. Yeah. And then it's like, fuck, it's too much. Well, this is where it's like, it's not just about your arousal level I'm talking about. It's talking about what's happening inside that brain. So it's like, okay, you're right, 100%. You know, when I'm snatching, especially with lifting, it's a lot more technical than a clean and jerk. You're probably not going to, you're not going to see me get as like, you know, shooken up, like, you know, mm. going crazy. You're going to see me be a little bit more calm. But what's happening in that brain, the mindset, is the mindset of oh, 110%. Your self-talk. And exactly. Yeah. It's not about just, okay, are you fucking headbutting a brick wall? Okay, good. It's right, like, cool. I get that. Got Everyone's you. around some people. Like when I was playing soccer, I wouldn't fucking get too G'd up. I'd need to stay You talk calm. about in here. In here, I need to be 110%. Yeah. And you can see Mind that. You. you can see when someone's, you know, going up for something, whether it be a lift or going to sport, and their mindset's not there. It's not at 110%. It's mm. not at winning. It's not a winning mindset. That's what matters. Everyone's arousal is going to be different. We just said that, yeah. And I'm never going to expect someone to, you know, headbutt a brick wall, get slapped like I like getting slapped. That's fair enough. And you can, you'll find people out. You, the more you spend time with someone, you'll see that. But then the day, every person who succeeds has the 110 percent mindset. 100. Mm-hmm. So whatever words work for them, there's a 110 percent, 110 percent mindset in their brain. Whether you're staying calm or not, yeah. there is. Yeah, you got to find that. Yeah. Well, well, context matters, man. Like. Um, <laughs> So I've had this at, um, yeah, Australian culture as well. Like that, they've got guys there that just fucking yell when they're going to the bar. Like I've found as well, like Dirk was saying with self-talk, I find me just going like, like, ah, like when I do a lift, I'm like, ah, ah, like that, just yelling. Yeah, I noticed, yeah. That helps me because I get into a mindset where I'm like, fuck, this way it's coming up. But even just like, it's like the, um, you're putting out all that energy. You're like, like, this isn't just me going for like two, like an easy way. I'm like, ah, just yelling. It's like when I get to heavy shit, it's time to go. And I like, for me, music's a great motivator as well. Like, uh, I've been, <laughs> so sometimes in the past, I've been, um, uh, Dids, shout out Dids for Sul. He, um, always tells me like, fucking cunt. Why are you like, just <laughs> some ways I'm just yelling too much and I'm just too aroused. I mean, there's a time and place for it. I feel like every set you can't be yelling cause you, you're fucking, you get fatigued from that. I think it's like, um, I've had, for example, like, um, Charlie Afanasi, my coach, he deadlifted 300 um, kilos to fucking My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Oh. And that, uh, like, I'm pretty sure I still got it up on his Insta. I'd have to have a look. But, yeah. like, he, but he, like, he doesn't give a fuck. I'm just like, he, he's like, he's like, just, you know, chuck on any song and I'll deadlift to it. Whereas, like, for me, I need fucking, like, some metal. I need some fucking big tunes. I'm like, I need some guitars. I need some fucking yelling. Like What fun. Andrew Huberman talked about is that the d- dopamine is heavily associated with music. And when you create associations with certain music and certain behaviors, you can become reliant on them. And oh, s- yep. Which is something you got, we got to be, I know I got to be careful of because your performance and your wanting to continue to do something difficult can actually decrease if you no longer have that same stimulus, like the hard music. What's great, what Huberman says, is that you want to, do it randomly or intersperse it. You don't always want to do like intense music. Sometimes you do soft. Sometimes you do no music. If you're Goggins, you say fuck music. That's that's <laughs> like no music at all, right? But there's an that's like it's a consideration when you think about the neurobiology of it. It's like hmm, because you undermine future dopamine spikes um, if you continue. Like each music has to be even more intense or stimulate the same amount of dopamine. Otherwise, it will go be under. And you'll receive less arousal and less stimulation. So I like, it reminded me when you said what Charlie did. I'm like, huh? Yeah, he's, he's like a, a savage in a garden. It doesn't matter what's around him. He, yeah. Celine Dion or, or, or Metallica. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. I like that. Well, I, I RDL'd um, 220 to fucking a Christmas carol. Like ah. to, to the Wiggles fucking <laughs> Christmas carols. I, I gotta try that shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll send for the Insta of me doing that. But um. Yeah, like just because did it, Dids was like to chuck it on. Like you, <laughs> it's like you were gonna deadlift. So deadlift, you were gonna RDL to this, and I was like, I was full like spazzing out. I'm like, fuck, I gotta get a fucking song going. I'm gonna get something going on here. I can't listen to this fucking shit. And then, <laughs> and then, um, and then I'm just like, fuck, right, I gotta do it now. So I'm just like, yep. Yeah, and I then I did it. Voice. Yeah, like oh, this is me, man. Like especially like in the in um at Woodford when I was lifting there, um. I would chuck on a uh, bit of Tool. I don't know how, do you know Tool? I know, of Tool. Of, of Tool, yeah. So Parabola, that's, one, that's a fucking huge song and you probably know it if you hear it. Um, but I like chucking on the gym and that's like my song. I'm like, fuck, I'm going. Um, for Dirk even, we'll chuck on like, um, what's that song? Ballin' by Logic. Chuck that on, that's Dirk. That went, that's when he's time to go. He's got a couple of other ones, but like, I feel like it can be like, 
you're positive, but also negative as well, as you said. When the time's right, go for it. Um, I do it a lot where I just chuck it on and it's like fucking just yelling. Um, is it the best? Yeah, who knows? Um, <laughs> for me, it works. So yeah. It's a funny thing because like, I've been playing around a bit with that, that I let other people, I haven't put on my phone on the music when I'm training now for quite a while. Because like, don't get me wrong, if I, w- I need a song, I'll put on a song, but I'm trying to just like, mm. even when I don't like the song, you can kind of just switch on in your brain. Yeah. Because when I'm competing, there's no fucking music. Conditions aren't going to be perfect. Well, yeah. It's like how when um when I'm training on Wednesday morning at Arm um, Culture and they chuck on a lot of like EDM trance, a bit of side trance, and I'm like, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is this is not for me. A bit hay going. A bit hay going. Yeah, but hey like, gone. but like as you said, man, like um, lifting wise in the side training, you're not going to get that in a comp. Like I'm not going to be in a comp. Um, can you chuck on this song right now? I need this for the. I need this for my. Otherwise, lift. I can't lift. Yeah, I, I literally, literally cannot <laughs> lift if you don't have the well, song. It's so. like even like if the bar's not perfectly fucking straight. Like who cares? Or it's like you know you're feeling a little bit tired. Who yeah. gives a fuck? You know I mean, like all these things that try to go in your brain. They're trying to create some sort of um, reason that you can't lift it or you can't lift it to the extent uh, extent you want to. Um, just get the fuck out of your brain. Like sometimes I go, oh, like, you know, you want to set the bar. Who gives a fuck? Are oh, you feeling a bit tired? Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're going to fuck time. I need to get it done. That's what you're going to do. Mm. You need to get it done this time. You get it done this fucking time. Shut up, get it done. So it's like a, um, a real big thing is just shut the fuck up and do it. I like Work that. Hard. Well, yeah. well, I feel like in terms of all our training, um, philosophies and ideologies, it's changed a lot more in terms of just like how we approach lifting now. Like back in the day, um, I know especially me and Alex like training um, we would obviously train hard but like we wouldn't have like as you develop you get the nuance behind it you get the sense of what you can actually achieve as well um, like for example like you're doing like a 170 deadlift like, they used to be a 1RM and now it's fucking for reps like you're doing that for reps so 170 or 180 I'm pretty sure you did 180 easily as well but like yeah yeah exactly yeah, like, one, progression. like 170 was fucking like no, it's uh, one, it one, one eighty by 180, 180 okay. pause deadlift by five. Okay, yeah, there you go, and you fucking have more in the tank as well. So yeah. it's like you don't, you don't, un- and that's also like um, training with your coach as well, training in like different training environments, mm. pushing a bit harder. So that's where like um, we like to set ourselves apart in terms of Woodford. Like we have an awesome training environment where you can you can achieve what you don't what you sorry. I had a brain a bit of, sorry a bit of a brain fart there. I lost all my train of thought. You can achieve. Um, you know, a lot more than you think you can in terms of your lifting. And that can also be achieved by a greater training environment as well. And um, just people getting around you and stuff, and that can help push you as well to, yeah. Lift Not even shit. lifting though. Like if you're doing a fucking Life max of a broad jump, fuck get yeah. around you, yeah. yeah. In the day, like you need high power, but you need intent, you need to push yourself. Nah, I'm yeah, all about weights here. And, a, and a, a good thing, I had a good chat with um, Lockie Wilmot at AA, and he said like, don't get me wrong, it's important to be able to absorb force and be able to stick your landing but when you're training fucking power <laughs> output push yourself like you know you're yeah. doing like a triple single leg hop you know if you're looking for power output on every single hop it's okay if you don't fucking stick the last one you know i mean there's time you just gotta look at the context of what you're trying to achieve but you know it doesn't necessarily That's have to be point. your squad especially I when like we're working that. with athletes yeah. even in the skills a fucking box jump a broad jump a sing, a triple hop you know what i mean it doesn't matter what you do yeah, mm-hmm. sure. in the day if you if you're looking for max effort output you got to fucking push yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's okay if you don't fucking stick that last landing. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Understanding landing mechanics, how to absorb it's crucial. But like we said, context and be able to push yourself, not just in your, in your fucking gym, not, in, not just when you're squatting, not just when you're RDL, but when you're doing skills as well is crucial, I believe. Absolutely. And that just goes away from, uh, goes more towards the not trying to achieve perfection uh, in this perfectly neutral spine, in this perfectly this perfect movement. You don't have to stick every landing. In fact, it's it's really to a, the nature of human beings is where we procrastinate and we wait for things, everything to be in line before we execute that business or that idea or this podcast you guys talk about. Go, do, yeah. execute. Do. You know somebody, you know many people who do podcasts. So you know what resources you could get to make that happen. You could find that out in five minutes and execute this podcast much quicker and easier than I did or someone else did. But- what we get stuck is like, oh, it's not, it didn't stick the landing perfect. Do the rep again. It didn't, uh, I don't have all the money yet. No, nah, it's too expensive. Make it, you don't need to do all that shit. It's too much. So I think it speaks to human behavior. 
Well, especially like when you're in the gym, I think, or even on the field, it doesn't matter what you're doing, especially with the skill. I think it's the balance between efficiency and output. That's the biggest way I've looked at it. It's like you want efficiency, you want output, but how close can you bring them together? They're never going to be both be perfect. Just understand your goal, understand where the athlete is at or the individual is at, and then from there, it's very. It makes it very simple on what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, you know what I mean, if like I know I'm looking for output in a triple hop, and I know they can really hit some good positions, I'm like, this gets the output. Fuck, if they don't, if they don't hit every single rep perfectly, but they get some fucking good distance and projection, tick. If they're a novice that comes into the gym and they just have no motor control, and I really just want to focus on some positions, don't worry about how far you jump. Let's look at some efficiency. Context. Context. Life is context. Always. Shut the fuck up and do it. Mm. Yeah. And, and that work hard thing, it's like what you said earlier about working hard. It's like, yeah. All right. So people want to work smart and have really good systems and like they want to just like, oh, I need to get this this program. It's got to be perfect program and I got to have this perfect nutrition plan and I got to get my organic sweet potatoes, <laughs> right, before I can start my new diet. Get from the market. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> it's like all these fucking sorry to anyone who's made them, and they're important. But like fucking New Year's resolutions. call them out. New Those cocks. New Year's resolutions where you start, you have to start on fucking the first of the fucking January. Sorry, no, the thirty first <laughs> of December does not fucking count. No, I can't start then. I'll start next week. I'll start next week. New month, new new week. Can't you start fucking right now? That's right. You start fucking right now. That's right. This minute. That's Just right. Not not two seconds later. You start fucking right now. If you want something to be done, you fucking do it. Simple. I fucking hate all this shit about, you know, once that week comes, we start fresh for the week. No, cunt. You fucking miss training early in the week. Start now. Right. Start now. Right. You want it? You want it. And I think for me personally, I find it's a great way to understand people. Okay. Are you really re- willing to fucking work then? Like, you know, when someone says, oh, no, no, but Monday, Monday comes. I'm like, okay. Okay. But you want this, this, and this, but you want to start fucking there. Right. Th- those things don't match. No. You want to be a professional, but you ain't acting like a professional. Yeah. No. Yeah, because at the end of the day, this is where it's like nothing ever goes to plan. Yeah, you're right. You might miss some fucking sessions of Saturday. It's never going to be perfect. The Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 a.m. You know what I mean? Shut the fuck up, all right? Let's be real, all right? Shit's going to fuck around. You know, you're going to have other things that happen in your life. So you might have to start fucking Wednesday. You might have to do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and regulate a little bit on those days or take a little bit lighter on the Saturday and the Sunday. Figure it the fuck out. That's what we're here for. Figure it out. Now. Figure it the fuck out. This man coined that phrase, figure it out. It wasn't any of these other fucking, you know, strength conditioning cucks. He was the man who did it. Um, he's got it on a shirt. Um, Is that what your shirt says? It's welcome to the fight and figure it out. But figure it out. <laughs> Just fi- figure it out, you fucking You're idiot. You're welcome. <laughs> this is, and this is what I'm going to explain, all right? You're welcome to the fight every fucking day. Every week is a new fight. Every day is a new fight. Every fucking second you wake up is a new fight. Nothing ever goes to plan. Bro, it's actually fucked. Like, stop looking at optimal. Everything's fucked. Like, training weeks are... Uh, like, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Optimal. Everything's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't want a good life because everything's no, fucked. <laughs> like, bro, like, stop looking at, like, it's going to be perfect. You're going to train at this minute, at this time. Yeah. Like, bro, oh, just exactly work right. around it. Be adaptable because the fi- you're part of the fight, bro. Every day's a fight, yeah? So you got to be adaptable. you got to improvise. you got to, you know, challenge yourself in different ways and you're going to have to play around with things, right? So just... Well, be, welcome yourself to the fight and then figure it the fuck out. You're in the fight, wake up. All right, fuck, no, shit. And the one-on-one change, I got to do it this morning. So I got to try and later in the day uh, after I eat dinner. Who cares? Figure it the fuck out. Get it done. <laughs> get it done. Yeah. Get it See done. It, bro. Do you mean like the Enough man- thinking. <laughs> no. <laughs> Enough procrastinating. Bro, like my day, like the amount of things that fucking go wrong in a good way, like they get moved around is like, it's like, it's endless, right? You know, different things are changing, like different scenarios because of the, I realized the more you work with more people, <laughs> your job's never like, and this is what I love to Franco for. I never really understood when I first started running a couple programs. It's like everything changes, bro. And you play, there's so many different things that change mm. because it's like, you know, you got to regulate this day. You know, this day was, you know, a bit of a deal. Like, oh, we worked hard on this day, even though it was like the later in the week, who cares? Because everything in life changes. It's so dynamic that such a fucking static written segmented program might not always work. You got to be able to manipulate, adapt and improvise, have a plan, but understand that <laughs> daily life's so different, man. Like everything's happening. Like well, they say Mike Tyson, everybody's got a, got a, got a plan until they get punched in the face. Hey, fuck them in. And hey, welcome to the fight man. is getting punched in the face every day. Exactly. Um, and someone that, because obviously you, you've seen Jademan's training at Woodford and like 
he's a very introverted sort of man. And yeah. I feel like mm. us just getting around him and like his in terms of confidence and stuff. And him, and him, yeah, come on. You can see the fire he, in him. He fucking he goes. He, talk about welcome to the fight. Talk about figuring it the fuck out. The cunt's figuring it the fuck out. Like he, he's very um, chill in some terms of lifting. And he <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah. Um, Great story. So Edmonds is going for this big lift, was it? A squat, yes. He's yeah, going definitely. for a fucking heavy squat. Never seen Edmonds that get you know get too aroused before. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know what happened. One more left in the fucking tank, and Edmonds like we all gone quiet because we didn't realize <laughs> Edmonds gone. Go on, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's g the fuck up, Mate. bro. I've never seen fire. Yeah. Everyone's like, go on, you get you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like, I've never seen Edmonds go dead quiet. Edmonds goes, come on, because <laughs> he, he did it. It's like he, the first two rows moved. Up. It was the last set. I think it was 115. It was like a PB for four. So 115 for four. That was the first couple of reps. We're like, mm, I don't know about this. Um, and then he, he does it. He's like, come on. We're like, come on. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Like, everyone's Rush like, go. Everyone's just, like, everyone's just gone slow. Rush like, go. like, I don't know how to explain. Everyone's just gone slow because we thought, oh, fuck, this is, he's done now. <laughs> and Edmonds, with, with, and this is a great example of, you know, believing in yourself, back yourself. Everyone's like, oh, I can't rack it back up. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, he's like, come on. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, one more, one more. He's uh, got it. Uh, in the video, I was like so quiet. I'm like, fuck, I don't want you to fail it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this on. Come on, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> see, I had everyone watching him as well. Like that that man, Um, he's become one of our, oh, I reckon one of our closer friends as You're well. Woodford, like, I love you, Edmund. He's, uh, he's, he's had a couple of <laughs> um, big nights on the town, going to know him. But, um, back you in. Back you in always. But yeah, just this, like, he's someone as well. It's like having people around him, that sort of like, pushing himself as we went back before with the music and all that sort of stuff. Like he's someone that um, getting that positive arousal and like that, you know, he's on the right side of the um, inverted U and he knows like, okay, when I need to go, I go. And like sometimes he'll like, we just want to watch a couple of his sets. He won't even tell us when he's doing a set. He'll just do a set. We're like, fuck man, we want to watch that set. He's like, nah, I just didn't want to show you. I'm like, fuck man. Like, why didn't you tell us? Like, but he's like very like, um, Nonchalant in terms yeah. of his lifting. He's not putting attention on him. He, he nah, he, he's like the opposite. Like, yeah. we got to actually, like. If he gets famous, he's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he, if he gets any sort of no, no, a not notoriety. If, when. Yeah, when, yeah no, I'll like, back you in, Edmund. Like, he's already got it now. He's already got it now, like, in terms of, like, um, informational posts and just being a great coach. But fuck, if we just, like, <laughs> there's some stuff going on. He's, yeah, he's going to be really. Um, yeah, he's not going to enjoy it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's yeah. someone that yeah. I've really um, enjoyed training with and just seen just in terms of his lifting and stuff. And he's someone that's made a lot of progress as well. Um, Isn't that cool, man? To see, like, oh, everybody awesome, in our man. circle, like, make progress. Yeah. Like, how dope is that? Like, you see the circle, a bunch of winners winning. Like, everybody. Like, I feel like... It's inspiring. Yeah, outside the gym, obviously, like, there's stuff I can do. But inside the gym, I feel like it's pretty, um, it's pretty good. Like, a lot of the guys... It's almost like, as you said, it's osmosis. Like once yeah. you get people in and you're fucking training hard, they're going to want to train hard as well. Like we'll get clients um, and they just get stronger by coming in as well. Like, um, yeah, Ben's brother, Alex, for example, he's like a fucking freak. He's like 16 years old. He did 200 the other day and shit like that. So 16 or 17? 16. 16, right. 16 years old, 200 kilos, trap bar in it. So like, um, and he's a fucking freak as well, but he gets like, and up when we're, when we're, sorry, when we're in there as well, he gets fucking G'd up and ready to go. And he's someone that benefits from positive training environment, similar to like a Nick Billings and stuff like that. Like you get people in there, Dean Os, like Dean, um, Mr. Mitro, like uh, I remember first set of eight before Christmas, so last week, um, did 155 for eight, moved like piss. I'm like, can't go up. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, that. I'm like, man, Shut la- up. last set of the fucking block, you're going to 160. And we're in a block where you can fucking send yeah. it. Like, let's go. Was, and I wasn't his coach and I was defying Chris and I just... Uh, Shut the fuck up, Dirk. <laughs> we're going heavier. And I don't know if Chris okay. wanted that decision. I'm like, nah, fuck it. We'll go. Like, was, <laughs> and he, he did it easy. I'm like... And I, at the end of the video, I'm like, fucking... Like, I was like going nuts and it cut off when I was going nuts. But I'm like, fucking hell, man. You could have done 160. I saw you do fucking 160. What the fuck? Like, I was so fucking annoyed because I'm like, this cunt can push more. But how much do we leave in the tank? Like, Doug Gawkins is like, we, we quit at 40%. I'm like, he might be onto something. Yeah. I'm like, 40%? I'm like, it's fucking low. Are you sure, Gawkins? I'm like, wow. When people like weight train, like if that's a five RPE, that's like, yeah, 50%. Yeah, theoretically, exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Well, and if some people go, like I've done it as well. It's like it's, seven, it's an RPE seven. Yeah, same. RPE seven's hard. Yeah, that's, really hard. Three that's reps. hard. Three reps. Exactly. Like a, le- like a leg press. You ever, uh, do you ever AMRAP our leg press? 
I did when it's I rough. was yeah, a couple of years ago. Couple, I did. A couple of fucking years ago. <laughs> Not recently. I've got it in my program. No, I put it in the program, Charlie. I've got, I've got, pen, got pendies though. Pendies okay. are fucked. Pe- pendulum, same things. Any, squats as well. Is oh, all the, any lower body AMRAP stuff, like keeping three reps in the tank is like, that's a lot of lactate buildup. It's really hard. Yes. And if it's not really hard, it's not hard enough. And you, we all get caught out. I'm like, sometimes after my set, I'm real pissed off at myself. I'm like, fuck, that ain't two, two reps in reserve. Right? And the reason, we haven't explained why this is important. The one reason why this is important is because, uh, as Dr. Mike Ozotel says, proximity to failure yes. is the stimulus. Fuck, I didn't mention that before. So what that yeah. means is that the, how close you get to failure it dictates uh, the stimulus to fatigue ratio, how, the, the extent of how much uh, a muscle is going to be contracted or nervous system is going to be stimulated. And that is a major, major factor to muscular hypertrophy and maximal strength development. So therefore, most of the research sits around three, four reps in reserve between like maximal strength and mm. particularly muscular hypertrophy. And so- Therefore, necessitating at least seven rep RPE or three RIR. What's well, like me? Um, excuse me. It's like when we talked about, we looked at the Franco's gym, like all the athletes that like you told me, Alex, you're like, Jack, Jack, strong, strong, athletic. Strong, strong, athletic. Like, what the fuck's mean? Going on? like, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, there's What's times the you need to regulate, source? but like, fuck. They work hard, yeah. you know what I mean? And DeFranco says, like, when he wants fucking force out, but he fucking gets him strong. <laughs> when he wants fucking mass, you know, mass is gas. When he wants fucking mass, he gets him fucking juicy. Like, they're working, you know what I mean? And look at every video, like, especially of his uh, traditional videos, like, of DeFranco coaching and, like, all his boys in that off-season mm. grinding, working hard, mm-hmm. like, fuck, it kind of inspires you. And, like, yeah, it's in, a, it's in a safe, man. It's in a bandwidth. But, like, sometimes you got to fucking work hard. And that's often, where, yeah, that's often. where the proximity and intelligently is periodize yeah. it, program it, have a good coach, have someone guiding you, and funny thing happens you get better and you get stronger, you get bigger, you get your goals. Well, let's go on to a, another point as well fucking getting a good coach, huh? Get people that yeah. like an overseer training, like because yeah. I, I fucking um didn't have a coach for ages. Mm. Um, well, Chris, well, yeah, Woody fucking got me on the strength culture as well because I wasn't, um, yeah, I, I was pr- like the first. Time I went in strength culture. I don't know if I've told Dids, Dids or like Charlie and the guys this. I was pretty intimidated walking in there because I was someone that thought I was top shit walking into there. And I was like, nah, <laughs> I am uh, very out of place here. So, uh, I, and then I've um, had Charlie coach me for two and a bit years now and I've made tremendous gains. So it's like you just get people at, like – Dirk's made tremendous gains of his um, coaches that he's had in the past. Alex, you've got Ben Kent like working for you now. It's like fuck, man. Like you're like they're lifting, squatting, benching, like um, hypertrophy markers as well. Like um, getting stronger, getting more jacked. It's like fuck, man. You got someone overseeing in training. Unless you're like, unless you're someone that's done it for years and you understand like in terms of your body and you're not going to give yourself bitch, you know, um, things as well. Like um, yeah, but even I thought that was me. We'd been doing it all for years already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet we still all have coaches. Yeah. Like there's a reason for that. That's the reason the best have coaches as well, man. Like I was about you, to say that, yeah. You, you, can't, you can't be, um, you, you're too biased you in terms of You need to be fucking training. humbled. And a coach yeah, the most humble. That. I've got to be the most humble around here. I believe. Like I think, you know, coaches humble you. Like in the day, you, you know, sometimes like you think you're like, oh, fuck. I My can't. coach is the most humble though. Yeah, of course. Man. Like, well, that's where <laughs> so, it's... <laughs> No, it's Same. like you said you walked you into did. fucking strength coach and you got fucking humbled. I mean? did because I sucked. Like I walked into I fuck. Walk, I walked in there. I'm like, I, fuck, man. You know, three years ago, I walked into the gym where my coach was coaching. I did like a fucking power clean. He's like, yeah, that was shit. I was like, I like this. That's guy. the first thing he said to you? Yeah. Because <laughs> I met another guy and he's like, you know, go on that platform. And then he's like, you know, Ivan's over there. Ivan's like, oh, let me watch the set. He's like, yeah, that was shit. I'm like. What made you get into Olympic lifting? Like, why did you uh, like- I spoke to Jay Ellis about this, probably doesn't remember the combo, but a couple of years ago, um, he said to me, he's like, you know, oil lifting's important. He's like, and I was like, I want to be able to coach it and I want to be able to learn. He's like, look, you know, go to someone who can really help you learn it because, you know, if you go on to someone who's very uh, developed in that sport and can coach it well, then obviously you'll learn it to the extent you can and then you can implement it whether you want to or not. You don't have to. But if you really want to learn it, learn it off someone who wants to, who coaches it, like a track and field. You know, if you go to a track and field coach, 
you know, you learn so much about that and then you can take principles from that and implement it. So at the first, I just wanted to learn it so that I could be able to coach it and become a better coach if I ever did want to implement it. Yeah. But then from there, I just loved it so much and I fell in love with it. I enjoyed it. There was something sparked in me, you know, don't get me wrong. And I, like, I still love soccer, but like it's something sparked in me to love weightlifting. And then from there, I just continued it. But I think it was so awesome to learn of someone who was very profound in that sport because then it allowed me to take off Take so many principles from it. Do you know what I mean? 100%. I think take what I wanted to be able to implement that. But it came from uh, wanting to be better at your craft. Yes. And then naturally it turned into, shit, I love this. <laughs> so often you find things that you're most passionate, interested in life is sometimes by accident, just by like your curiosity. It's like, oh, let me get better at this. And then like you've been playing guitar for like, a, I don't know, a decade. More. Long, long time. Like 15 Jeez. years. Jeez, no, 15, 15, 15, Holy 15, moly, guacamole. <laughs> I don't know if it was... Yeah, I, I, well, that's, I got into it because I saw mates doing it, so I just wanted to do it. And then over time, I just enjoyed playing. I like music. I feel like yeah. music similar to lifting is where... Um, I don't know if, Dirk, you feel this in terms of just like lifting. Like you get a chance to express yourself and you're just like, I can take on a different character, if you will, in terms of like lifting or just like... Um, Music playing, like music playing, if you immerse yourself in the performance, you feel like, like in music, like I just enjoy myself. I'm just like on the stage going, a bit of this, a bit of the Stevie Wonders, eyes closed going like that. But um, I just enjoy myself and it just helps in terms of just like my playing because um, I got taught this obviously from an early age. If you actually like look like you give a fuck about being, you know, in terms of playing or just like you want to be there in terms of performance, the crowd's going to, you know, react awesomely to it as well. Like if you're someone, you're just playing a bit of, you know, guitar and you're like, it's like, all right, well, fuck. <laughs> Why am I watching this person? Mm. But I, I like to give myself, or give myself, put um, 100% into the music playing. But you generally look like you you are jamming, you are enjoying oh, the music you're playing. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, I and I just enjoy it, man. It's just a good release. Like, mm. um, <laughs> it's like at, um, at clubs and shit, like, um, I hear music and I'm just like, fucking, oh, I wish there was some guitar in this. So I just wish there was some fucking rock. And just, right. as a bit of just <laughs> it gives you time out of your day, whether it be playing guitar, training, or whatever whatever it be. It gives you time out of your day to think about one thing and that one thing only. Yeah, you're present. I mean, yeah. Present as fuck. fuck that's, that's what I feel about lifting heavy weight. man. 100%. Yeah, you have to be present. You have to, you know, like you got Nothing one Nothing else in the world matters. There could be, the world could have just gone to war, right? <laughs> you don't know. Cause you are zoned in. Yeah. You can't hear the missiles coming to drop. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't want it to hit me in my head. Like I don't even want to be here if that shit happens. Right? Just take me out. But I want to still finish my set. <laughs> exactly. Right? Still your motherfucking <laughs> set. <laughs> That's right. Jinx. <sighs> what are we talking about? Being present and how training elicits that. <laughs> That's a good sentence. Yeah. I like that sentence elicits that. Yeah. Yes. And then guitar. And what's your version? Like well, obviously weight, ollie lifting. Yeah. And then there's, look, we're not just coaches and um, learning. people who lift. I love learning. Just like, mate, I'm just curious about so many different things. Like, like what? Yeah. What's well, an obscure, what's an obscure topic that you like learning about that no one knows? What don't we know about you, Chris? Animals. Love uh, animals. animals. Mate, like <laughs> you can ask some people like at night, like I watch this fucking videos of animals doing random shit. Like, just, well, like, well, we like, like I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with animals. And I always said like in my brain, like if I didn't fall in love with S and C, like yeah. I probably would have become a biologist. Cause I just yeah. love, I just, I'm obsessed Fuck, with animals. I like that. And I've never, no, yeah. not a lot of people lo- know that, but I just love, like I'm obsessed with animals. Like if I could go to Brazil and just like, or just anywhere and spend time with some apes or something, I would, like, <laughs> it would make my life. Like that for me is like a little passion inside my heart that I have. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like I can connect with them. Like, <laughs> sounds stupid. Yesterday, right, I was going for a walk with the missus and we passed a couple of horses and I was patting a couple of horses. I can show you the video. <laughs> I was just, and I was enjoying myself. So I had a great time. I was patting a couple of horses. Like, for me, that's just like, I love that. I where love- are you walking where there are horses? Croydon, baby. <laughs> like no, it was, out to Croydon. It, was, it was like next to a horse paddock. Let's like, you know what? Let's get it up. Let's get it up. Let's, you know, get, let's get me up patting a couple of horses. You know, horses. Um, she lives near uh, Dids. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, they both Alex and oh, shit. That's Alex. So I can mention go. her name. Here we go. Look at me pat this horse. Sandals, come have a look at this. Now the people can't see this, but yeah, here we go. Look at me patting this horse. <laughs> I can't see you patting it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a nice horse. I was, I was feeding a grass too, but yes, <laughs> for me, animals. It's a great little passion I have, and learning about them. You know, just observing them, 
This is something that, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. I just love it. Yeah, I wanted to be a paleontologist when I was younger. Really? I like there fucking froth dinosaurs. You like Max Max froth? Dinosaurs. I actually like legit wanted to be a paleontologist, and I was like, ah. <laughs> I don't ah. know, didn't follow through for it. Like I, I liked ex, um, sport and exercise science more, but um, so Max wanted to be a paleontologist. No, he just loves dinosaurs. Oh yeah, I, 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 no, I love dinosaurs from like dinosaurs and trains from like <laughs> eight, uh, like six years old. Up until like 12 Trains is like a normal ch- Child sort of thing Like like trains And that sort of shit But dinosaurs I feel like um, I never watched Jurassic Park Coincidentally But like I've seen it obviously now But like I didn't watch it when I was younger But um, I just enjoy like Learning about different dinosaurs um, And their habits and stuff What sort of happened Different eras of dinosaurs um, Yeah Sometimes Having that though Not as your occupation Is a big thing Like yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I love SNC and that, that's definitely what I love to do is my occupation. I, you know, I want to continue and pursue that career. Yeah. But I still love fucking animals. Yeah, you know. And I'll still learn about them, you know, in my free time, what I can do. Like, yeah. that, that for me is huge. So it's like, I feel like that doesn't necessarily want to, I don't want to do that as a job, but I just love it. And I think that's important to have. Yeah. And it's not your hobby as well, man. As it's like, people get caught up in like, their identity is based in their hobby. Yeah. yeah. Like fucking power thing. Fuck, I identify I identify as a powerlifter. I am a powerlifter. It's like, cool, what else do you do? Uh, I lift weights. All right, cool. Do you have any other things you like? Eh, not really. And this is and this is actually funny because I want to just talk about, like, shout out to AA again. Um, Lockie Wilmot said, like, mm. his first yeah. discussion with someone who wants to join their gym as, like, like, as a career, like, to work there is, can they just sit down and have a conversation not about S&C? Because he's like, I can teach you my systems. I can't teach you interpersonal skills. And like, you know, being able to connect with people just naturally and be able to discuss just anything, anything but that, your work. Um, and that's a big thing I learned. I was like, okay, yeah, that's true. Because in the end of the day, like we all work together, especially in the gym environment, we're all working together as humans. It's like, mm. we're always learning more you know, and getting more experience. Like that, that will never stop. No, we don't expect to have it all, but in the day, if you can't work with people, you're in trouble. People first. Yeah, we're first. all humans, right? Exactly. Like, do we realize that? Like, we're all the same, essentially. We're, we're different. We have variability. Chimps. Yeah. We're all just talking chimps. chimps. Yeah. We're all right? just talking chimps. Um, well, that's like, yeah, that's like fucking us talking about Cobra Kai. We're like, fuck the George Cobra Kai, and us discussing that with clients as well. Like, it's that's a fucking good oh, season four. I tell you, fucking what. Huge for the brand that show. Um, definitely get on that. Shout out Netflix. Shout out Cobra Kai. Shout out Netflix. Don't need shout outs, bro. They got shout cash. Out, shout out. Um, they got coin. Ralph Macchio. Um, what's the other guy's name? William. Sorry, whatever. Yeah, that's a fucking great show. But anyways, just discussing that or like The Bachelor or like fucking whatever the fuck reality TV bullshit. You watch reality? You watch a Bachelor? You watch reality? No, TV? no. I'm saying like people watch that sort of stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm nah, gonna judge you. Nah, I haven't watched that fucking. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> There, there is a lot going on with that. Nah, I'm a, um, I'm a flicks, man. The point is that <laughs> we're able to have conversations yeah. Yeah. that are outside of our job. And don't get me wrong, we love what we do, but like- You're more definitely. than what you do. Exactly. Most, and most people don't care, man. If I'm, if I'm like, oh, actually, uh, needs with this, or actually, you know, you need to, you know, internally rotate with this, or and actually, like, no one fucking cares, man. Like, just, they don't care about that, like, at times, man. You know what I mean? Like, if they uh, they ask you, they'll ask you, but like- yeah, so don't people know. don't care. Like, just like, can you make me stronger? Yes. Can you also get me faster? Yes. Well, then, it's, it's like, yeah. I, so, obviously, people want to know, and you want to, like, educate the client, but we're all people. Not, just, not everybody needs to know four sequels, mass time. Yeah, we're all just jacking each other off, like, yeah. saying like that, man. Like, it's all fucked. Like, we're, we're all just like, fuck, no one's, like, which is cool, but sometimes we just don't need to say that. We're just like, all right. Spend fucking 58 minutes out of the hour educating and two <laughs> minutes of actually lifting. <laughs> Oh God! It's science, brother. <laughs> That's that can happen. I've seen that happen with a mutual coaching friend of ours who happens to maybe own the facility that <laughs> y'all work at, who spends a lot of time discussing and talking. Yeah. And then, oh shit, we did it. only did like five sets. Oh shit, that ain't shit. <laughs> Let's get to work. But it's interpersonal skills, and man. Connecting with your clients yeah. is important. Fuck yeah, exactly right. So you know what? Why, it all works. Well, why do people want to train at Woodford? Because they enjoy the environment. They enjoy talk, like you know, talking to whichever coach we have. Yeah. They actually like want to be there. Yeah, and some people do want to learn. 
you know what I mean? Some people, and yeah. you, like, like every coach, good coach has said, like you'll find your balance of clients. Some will just want a bit for you to shut the fuck up, talk about something different, get, you know, get, get them to work. And then others will actually want to learn actually, regardless if that's their occupation or not, they just want to kind of understand what's happening. Yeah, some clients are just like, just tell me what I'm doing. I'm like, crazy. Here's what you're doing. And that's it. <laughs> I want to know more about these animals thing. Okay, you love <laughs> animals. Would you, so a biologist. Um, have you, do you go to zoos? You ever yeah. visit zoos? Okay. Is that a, is that a, what do you like in zoos? Because I'm also fascinated by animals. Um, so going to Singapore Zoo twice uh, stimulated something in me and triggered something in me that uh, I'd never felt before about animals. What, is like your favorite experiences around animals that you've had. What's your favorite animal and well, creature? For me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apes, I do love like chimpanzees. Oh, yeah? Like, yeah, but just because of how, like how smart they are. It is like, it amazes me and every animal. But like, I just, I've just had a, like a passion for them. You know, even when I was in school learning about biology and learning about the history of the way we've evolved. And it's like, it amazes me that, you know, people can give so much shit to, you know, animals, but, you know, they can actually be so smart. And that's what I love about them that, I know it sounds stupid, but they have a brain themselves and they're thinking they, there's so many thoughts that are still going in there. Yeah, it's not English, bro, but I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's, it's something they're thinking and they, they can actually have intelligent thought patterns. And it amazes me. You're gonna, you, I don't know if you've seen this photo. This is an orangutan, which is spearfishing. It has learned to spearfish. And anthropologists have actually seen them using tools since the 80s. And they think that these apes are now coming into a new age of evolution using tools. Like, that's what do humans do, right? Look yeah. at that. He's fucking spearfishing it and everything. That's some human shit. And yeah. so, I just thought that was a fascinating. No, thing. that's it's fucking, awesome. it's awesome. It seems fuck. And that's exciting. Yeah. And to even be next to an animal, to like within the, pro like yeah. the, the vicinity Ooh. of an animal and thinking like, wow. Like you're thinking too. What's the most wow you've been around an animal? You two, Bozilla. I don't know if you've ever been to zoos or been around some like elephants or a hippo or something. <laughs> Let me think. That's it. Uh, I'll tell you. One time I was in Singapore Zoo and we were around orangutan, right? Yeah. And orangutan, and, and you got to sit next to it, okay? And just, uh, they were feeding it. Uh, the feeding demonstration. They will tell you about how they fed them and the orangutans and educate you. And, uh, I sat next to them and you, and you look at them just you're pretty close. And you're like, oh, that's, it, I don't even know how to describe it. Like you see a bit of your, it's weird. You see almost a bit of yourself in them. Like they have two eyes. They've got a nose. They've got a mouth. They look very different. They can't talk to you, but they like, they have these like five fingers. They, they're grabbing food. They're eating it. Then you see them eating. I'm like, whoa, you're like a living creature. That is coexists in the ecosystem of the world, and there's thousands of them. I just think it's fascinating. Well, it's elephants. Yeah, yeah, I want to go to Singapore. Yeah, well, they are they are like closest to us in terms of the animal. Well, chimpanzees are chimpanzees. Sorry, not uh, orangutan. Well, orangutan like similar sort of. I don't know. But don't amazing. don't shoot me. Um, I'm not up to date in terms of like animal knowledge in terms mm -hmm. of like. Uh, chimps and orangutans like they'll forgive you man yeah <laughs> but um yeah don't don't shoot me fucking animal rights cucks but um <laughs> yeah like uh for me i don't really have probably sure you have a better one than me i, I don't know just going to werribee zoo melbourne yeah, zoo. werribee's a really good one um been to the aquarium as well and just sussing out the um is the aquarium just a prison for fish a zoo is just prisons for animals oh we're going to topics there <laughs> um well it's deep. Well, that's an uncomfortable so one, if, isn't it? So if we talk about if we talk about um, animals in terms of just like, as Chris was saying before, like we believe they not think similar to us, obviously, but like they have their own way of thinking, they have their own language, all that sort of stuff, primitive sort of thoughts. Um, it's it's a place where they are housed, and you can say they are getting good conditions in terms of just like um, food. But you can also argue that in terms of the entertainment, like they're providing entertainment for us sometimes when they don't want to. They have a place in the wild where <laughs> they have a place in the wild where they like see friends they, and they see um, similar animals. And if you keep them caged, well, it's, it's similar. Uh, 
are dogs so regular domesticated animals? Yeah, are they, like should we have all of them in the wild? Like us keeping dogs as well? Like because they used to be wolves. Yeah, like in terms of, and like similar sort of concept as well. Like you can argue that some of the domesticated dogs, you know, should be in the wild. Um, in terms of stuff, I feel like I'm neither here nor there in terms of that. I feel like it is it is a prison, but. It sort of depends on, I don't know why you're putting them in. The type of zoo. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Chris? You love animals. Look, I am glad that in some circumstances they do get, like, you know, they do get treated well. But at the end of the day, it does affect their natural growth as an animal, you know, being congested into a, a small space. I do love the zoo, though, because I do love... That interaction yeah. with them, so it's a hard one. Where else do you get to interact with wild animals? Exactly. And, so and develop an empathy and compassion and connect. Like I look at an elephant, I fed an elephant in Singapore Zoo. Mm-hmm. And what they say actually specifically is we let the elephants come out. If they don't want to come out, we don't force them. We leave them. We let If they want to come out because there's food all out, and if the elephants don't come out, they don't come out, right? Yeah. So sometimes they don't come out. Um, so I think some uh, zoos are, are conscious of these things. And I tried to think about this and I was being like a bit like facetious and a bit like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like um, controversial when I said prison on purpose. Cause nah, some so people like, believe that. Yes, yeah, people but, do definitely believe that. And then I thought about this and it's like, well, it's an insurance policy for some animals that are going extinct, an insurance policy. So they'll breed them. I'll try breeding programs like the pygmy hippos, um, for example, which are these big fat, just, <laughs> like I can't even describe it. And they've got a breeding program in Singapore for them. Um, so there's that. There's massive education going on. If you actually make the effort to speak to zookeepers and see the programs and the presentations. It allows people, because they can develop that empathy, it allows yeah. people to also be a bit more conscious yeah. of animals around the world. So look, I think it's beautiful Yeah, when done right. Well, yeah. it's like we go in this rabbit hole. Um, speaking on empathy, like if we chucked people in a cage yeah. and we were telling them to parade around, um, you get certain feeding windows, um, I don't know, you, you do whatever, like is that considered, you know, a prison? Is that considered a place like similar to animals where it's like you get certain times where they come out, you feed, I don't know. You There's get two certain- things in our society that are like that with humans. Do you know what they are? Jail. Yeah. And that's for bad people, yeah. right? For people who've committed. Yeah. Crimes makes somewhat sense. There's another one. I'm fucking blanking. <laughs> Elderly. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, okay. So it's a strange one, right? That's actually fucking true. Yeah, 100%. You like revert. I don't know if have you guys been in aged care homes, like with your grandparents, maybe? Yeah. Okay. It's, um, how'd you feel walking inside? Uh, yeah. Maybe you feel fine. I don't know. It feels, yeah, it feels different. It feels. How do I say this without sounding too morbid? No, say what you feel. I don't know. I just feel like it's a place obviously where they can retire gracefully and um, obviously head into the last sort of chapters of your life as well. But um, I I just enjoyed seeing, um, like it wasn't my grandparents, it was more just like, but it was still family. So mm. it was like um, like a nonna of like a cousin or something like sure. that. Um I don't know, it just felt weird. It's like, yeah. you, you just know it's coming. So. You got your grandparents still here? Yeah. I sure do. Okay. That's good. And they may or may not experience that. To me, it's, it, was, it was depressing. It's like it smells weird. Uh. <laughs> it's like feels clinical. Like yeah. all the walls are white and, and uh, they're just, you get walk in these rooms and they're just, they're all just kind of like, a lot of them are medicated. It depends on the type of home you get, right? Um, a lot of them have Alzheimer's, dementia, so they need, you know, 24-7 care. They're incontinent. They got, like, diapers. Uh, some of them are in wheelchairs, and they're just, like, sitting around, and just, like, some of them are just staring at walls, bro. They're just, like, catatonic. They're just... I'm like, holy shit. Mm. It's like you're born uh, useless. You can't do anything. Yours totally depends on, on your parents to keep to survive. And then when you get old... Well, m- most people, a lot of people get old. You cross the threshold and you're like, now you're totally dependent on young people to keep you alive. It's this 
weird cycle. It's like you're born useless and you, you kind of die useless. Maybe there's a better word I can use. Uh, you're born being dependent on others and you're, you kind of die losing your faculties as you become yeah. dependent on others. Like we're young now, but one day we're going to be old. Yeah. Do you think about that? Uh, n- not till now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about it. I'm ha- scared. Has an existential crisis. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> panic, panic attack. On existentialism, it's mm-hmm. like, what? Why? Why the fuck are we here? Yeah. Like, it's not to get too deep, but like, why not get too deep? Well, in a fucking generation, man. After we die, yeah, and after you know our kids' kids grow up and they die, we're not known about. We're not. Um, people don't know who we are. Um, people don't have any memories of us. So it's like, why the fuck are we here? Like, why? Why are you here or why are we well, here? What's the point of life? Yeah, well, why are we here? Like, that's, that's another question as well. Like, I'm um, I'm not existential, existentialist at all. Like, I'm not really into that mindset. Um, what yeah, does that mean? Um, just like... Oh I know I God. said existential crisis. I really should know what the yeah. fucking word I use means. <laughs> I'm going to give you a shit meaning. But I am just a simple yeah. chimp at the end of the day. <laughs> Egg, I don't even know how to spell it. Existential. Um, E-X- I'm just typing in T- letters right now. Yeah. I just put a hashtag in. Jesus Christ. <laughs> existential. Relating to existence. Okay. <laughs> Affirming or implying the existence of a thing. Existentialism is the form of philosophical inquiry that explores the problem of human existence and centers on the experience of thinking. Fi- okay. I live. Oh my God. <laughs> Shit. I think I like existentialism. I think that's, I spent a lot of time there, but you know so much, Bozilla, you said. But so I don't know, know so much. You don't, you don't think about this. That no, stuff no, no. I, don't, I like, I would say no, it is, exists, but I'm not like okay. fucking worrying about. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. Oh, why are we like, here? Why are we? Yeah. Well, who knows? Why are we here? Are there aliens looking <laughs> looking out for us? Uh, are we the aliens? Will we become the aliens? As humans advance over a long enough time period, you know those images we see of like grey aliens with no genitals? Do we become that? Do we lose our... Yeah. <laughs> Do we get neutered? <laughs> That's an interesting uh, thought to think about, isn't it? Well, if you think <laughs> on, on a long enough time, sp- time point... What's happening? Well, okay. This is going to go. This is going to go hard. <laughs> right. All in, baby. All in. So we're right. becoming more of a sexless society, like uh, gender identity wise. We're kind of identifying as everything and anything we want, right? And um, there's about a thousand jokes you can make there uh, just for comedic purposes. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on there, right? <laughs> yeah. But we'll skip over that for a second. Yeah. All right. Then they start putting chip. They say they. We start putting chips in ourselves. Like artificial intelligence begins to merge with the human consciousness. Okay. That means you can read my thoughts and I can read your thoughts. We don't need to talk anymore. Elon Musk says one day we won't need to talk. Because like that's where he's taking his um his technology. What is it called? Neuralink. Have you heard of Neuralink? No. Oh my boys. No, I've heard of him. Talk about it a little bit. Okay, Neuralink. So he's using it to help people who have like serious debilitating like spinal injuries, which is amazing. Like people be able to walk who have like severed spines. Like, wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty amazing. It's yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah. Good for you, Elon. Shout out. Yeah. All right, come on the podcast. <laughs> then eventually he, in his presentation, they talked about, um, you know how like we got dial up and then we got broadband and then we got like MBN. We yeah. got like increased fiber bandwidth. So more data can come in faster. Well, the brain is limited for how much information we can absorb. I can't, memory is actually really shit in human brains. But what if it wasn't? What if you could increase the bandwidth and just like download data, just like you would download data from like the internet? Well, Neuralink is eventually trying to get there and they implant a little tiny, tiny little chip on the the scalp of your brain. Um, Okay. And then I can absorb information better. Maybe I can have like a little HUD over my eyes or something. Um, you know, maybe that's where it goes next. Then we don't need to think anymore. And then eventually, maybe we don't need to have sex anymore because how do we get there? We don't have to procreate. I've heard this being explained. Why don't we have to procreate, boys? Why wouldn't we need to procreate? Because humans are getting made elsewhere. Humans are being made in a lab. Yeah. Genetic engineering. CRISPR technology. Have you heard of CRISPR? 
Oh, boys. Right. If a Lockie Wilmot was here, he's like, can you talk about other things? Lockie Wilmot, let's talk about CRISPR. <laughs> Look, I'd go down the rabbit hole, brother. Let's, uh, let's suss it out. Yeah, you want some stuff. Want it. You don't know how far you've gotten into this. Gene editing. Okay. You know, we got genes. We got uh, that control the expression of <sighs> predispositions, behaviours. Well, what if you could edit them? But if you could edit them so then you weren't predisposed to having like Alzheimer's or you weren't predisposed to having diabetes. So we edit them. Well, or I want blue eyes, red eyes. I want him to, I want his general intelligence and IQ to be higher. I want it to be a girl. Okay, this is happening. Basically in Asia and China, China's, they're going to break it. They, they're ahead of the game. <laughs> so then we can start editing genes, splicing up and making humans more like we want humans. We design like a ideal race or ideal oh. race of people um, through the, the, the technology that, that we have. So then we create an army of like ideal people. Okay. And maybe eventually we don't need to actually have people have sex because we can make babies in a lab just like we can in vitro fertilization where it can take sperm, have an egg. Cool. What if now I have, I have another organism? I don't need, I don't need you humans. Because Elon Musk is going to have robots in our home in, have you seen iRobot? Uh, ages ago. Okay. You seen iRobot, Chris, with the Will Smith movie? Oh, no, no, well, he hasn't. Okay. So this thing is called the Tesla bot. Yeah, fuck. This Tesla bot is real. Oh, real? It's not a game. Hey, my, my mind's just going, going everywhere thing, right now. This is a, for those just listening, it's a black and white, like I would look it up if you haven't seen this. It's this black and white uh, metallic, it looks like a human with like no face. And if you've seen iRobot, it's essentially that, mm. oh, there's a person in here. They're kind of fucking around right now, okay. <laughs> Oh, here we go. We'll get to the to, to the, actually the details of it. Um, it can deadlift 150 pounds, so it's already you know got a good deadlift, which we like. It can uh, it's learned the hinge pattern. Um, it can it can go up to five miles an hour, so at least you can run away from it for now. Uh, human level hands, lightweight materials, uh, forty electromechanical actuators. Now. What Mr. Musk said is he's trying to make it so if you don't have, there's no, if you don't, have, he's going to eliminate manual labor. You know, manual labor, mm. like hard work, manual labor, digging ditches, uh, uh, building, um, building things with your hands. He's going to eliminate that because these robots, he's saying, will be able to do it uh, more efficiently and safely. So then humans don't have to be harmed or have to do this. And we can, humans can do other things. So... When these are in your homes eventually as companions in 50 to 100 years and we're old people and we're like, man, back in my day, we didn't have no robots. <laughs> we didn't, you know. <laughs> eventually, they're going to figure out a probably a way to make these things have babies or maybe these things will become, they'll put genes in them or some way where humans won't need to have sex and then we can design ourselves how we want to design ourselves. We can we make ourselves into the lean, little green genitalless aliens that we see in, in fantasy. Yeah, it's a fucking whole lot to. I just, I just, you guys really let me go there. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't well, that was that was a rant. <laughs> Holy moly! How, um, how long do you reckon? Before all these changes, it depends which ones. Yeah. which changes because this would be a this would be obviously way past our lifetime as well. Which part? Maybe the last part with the alien shit. Maybe yeah, that was the alien shit. But this this is obviously like this is now getting going now. Yeah, so this like, is now, bro. Th this is yeah. Are you seeing Black Mirror, the Netflix nah, show? I have. I've got to watch that. No, no, no. I hear that's good though. Yeah, that's good though. Guys. Guys, 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 when you get home, what you got to do is you got to turn on Black Mirror, please, please. It, it, it 
it'll give you a window into the potential future and really make you sit down and think, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I can't describe it. No, I'm too busy. Um, uh, what do you call it? Watching The Office or <laughs> fucking Seinfeld, Cream Enthusiasm, all those shows. To fucking classics. You yeah. just mentioned classics. Yeah. The Office I was watching during um, ISO. I really, Love that. I really enjoyed it, yeah. Well, this, this sort of fucked with this as well. Like, the fact that it's in our lifetime in terms of all this stuff and the fact that, um, yeah, as you said, pretty much we might be rendered useless as a race. So a race, um, or rendered useless in terms of just like, I don't know, just beings. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it, I, I honestly like, I like, I like you sort of going on rants about it because it's a lot to think about as well in terms mm. of just like, Something to take home and think about. Yeah. Isn't it? Something that I know you uh you like to you like to um have your edibles, right? <laughs> so I hear <laughs> right, I hear rumors. Uh, yeah. This may be something <laughs> that you can enjoy and really think about. Hey, you said it in a where did you say? You think you I don't know where you said it. I hope <laughs> if you said it publicly. Um, I said probably to a, didn't said to a couple of people that yeah. publicly, so it's alrighty. Well, we can take it out if you yeah, don't want it. It doesn't matter. Like, I okay, <laughs> something to think about when you're sending your brain into a different level of consciousness. Yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get onto it. I'll, I'll tell my mate um, to get some stuff. <laughs> hook it up. Yeah, hook it up. Make it happen. I will. I'll definitely. We'll chuck on Black Mirror. We'll discuss the existence I'm, of things. I'm dead so. ass. I'm gonna need you to do this. <laughs> Need you and you to do this. Actually, fuck, you might have to come over and we'll do this. Either yeah. way. Come back on this podcast and rediscuss. That's right. <laughs> rediscuss. Yeah, so uh, it'll change. What we know, I think what it will be to be a human will change and how we interact with like basic tasks, manual labor, automated driving, you know, um, interacting with each other. This one on one communication is going to change. Yeah. I think it's going to change. Yeah. Just already with phones, right? Just like how, like five hours, six hours of daily daily time on average, like people get on their phones. That didn't exist like 20 years ago. What's next? Mm. You, guys don't th- <laughs> you guys don't think about this? Shit. Uh, you guys just- <laughs> <laughs> Not to the extent that you thought about it. God, I must be a mad monkey or chimp or something. <laughs> I don't think it's a mad, I don't think you're a mad monkey. I, no, I agree. I think it's yeah. very interesting. I think- for me, I'm a real like day by day type of person. Like, <laughs> like we're, we're, we're going real fucking far ahead we right now. Guys, we, okay, brother. We, we hit the accelerator real hard there. Like We did, we did. No, but we it's went good. F- I think it's good. I think there's times <laughs> we need to recap that, but then sometimes it's like to give the best, the to implement the best things you can, I think you need to kind of just like, all right, shit's going to fucking change. Yeah, we'll be change. adaptable, be yeah, improvised. Absolutely. But, but fuck, focus on what you got to do in the fucking second. Don't get me wrong. This is fucking very interesting. And now I need to go home and think about this. But at the same time, I think it's important just to go day by day. Have have your plans for the future. But like, fuck, man. Who the fuck knows? I don't could know. Could be what, dead next week. Yeah, bro. I could. I might get hit by a bus, bro. Like, fuck. It's always the bus. <laughs> you notice that? Yeah, I don't know. It's always the bus. It's, something, it's, something it's big. It's, it's like a car can't take us out. Yeah, no, a bus. A bus. It's way more exciting, bro. You know what? I'm, I'm, take me an airplane. Yeah, I want, I, helicopter. I want to somehow end up on a runway and then. Sh- a Godzilla. Oh yeah. <laughs> Godzilla. But yes, you don't I know. Get it. You, you don't, don't wanna, know. What, you know what the fuck's gonna happen. You don't want to spend too much time ruminating on the future because it takes you away from the present. Yeah. Because like you look at the end of your day, it's like, what the fuck did you do? Right. What did you What did you achieve today? All right. To help you, we all talk about all these fucking goals. All this, you know, I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. We all We all want to be somewhere. We all want to be some type of person. Mm. But what do we do day in, day out that helps us? Because that's what it is. It's a little fucking one percenters that make us, you know, when we do it consistently, that make us better, that make every situation better. So it's like, yes, I agree. This is fucking awesome. And it's but this great. is going to come, bro. It will come. Are you going to be ready? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody. Yes. Are you going to be ready? Because our parents aren't ready, right? Are we going to be ready? Or are we going to be the old people like, you know, doing traditional shit, like still with our phones while these other kids got like HUDs on their eyes and they're walking like robots? <laughs> But yeah. this is where it's like, do your day by day stuff, but don't be naive. Mm. It's like, it's a mixture. Like mm. you need to be present. You need to fucking work hard day by day. You gotta do what you gotta do day by day, week in, week out. 
But then don't be naive when you see shit change. But oh my God, stuff's changing. Mm. Like you fucking idiot. Yes, yeah, shit's no changing. Shit. Supposed to. Yes. Well, it's like fucking quarantine, man. No one fucking predicted the past That's two years. Well, some people did though. Well, some people did, but that was. Yeah. You want to be on that, like, but the majority did it. Right? Okay, majority did it. Minor- minority were like, yeah. But what if you were though. the minority? What if you thought ahead and just like, huh? Are you ready? What happens when the power goes out? Well, yeah. That's what happens when when your ta- the tap that takes out water that comes water comes out? Do we know how to filter our own water? Do we know how to get our own water? Do you have a water filter? I don't understand why. Like, the last world war was in the forties. Shit. Again, focus on the day, right? But like suffering and pain is guaranteed. The future was filled with trials and tribulations. It's filled with a lot of joy and great, amazing things, but it will be filled with trials and tribulations. So it's like either if there's like an asteroid or war, you know, probably just hit me square in the face would be good. I know. Like, <laughs> I don't like, know if yeah. I'm trying to help rebuild society and civilization, but you might. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's not inconceivable <laughs> yeah. uh, that- a catastrophic natural disaster could occur, man-made, terrorist, biological. <laughs> Sometimes I think about the unlimited ways that human civilization could crumble. It's a very heady shit. And it can make people sad and depressed and I don't want to think about it. It can send people down spirals. But... um If you think about it, maybe you can be a little bit prepared for uncertainty. It's just a principle of preparing for uncertainty, which is guaranteed. Yeah, I I am very different (laughs) in terms of that, but it's okay. It's it's right though. I I like I like your reasoning behind it. Um, I've never thought about it. And I'll never think about it again. I never think about it again. I uh, like that idea. I talk about here. <laughs> I like that idea. Like I get it. Being prepared for uncertainty is important, but like those who adapt to uncertainty when it comes and had no preparation are the ones that, you know, show great improvisation. And yeah. like, that's a skill in itself. So it's like, yes, you want to be prepared, but fuck man. Like a lot of the times you're not, it's like, let's be real. Like, yeah, right. There was a minority that thought about like, like, like you know, that predicted it, right? Yeah. Good on him. You did well. But I didn't fucking think it. So fuck off. <laughs> I'm going to sit like, oh, well, what if I yeah. did? Oh, well, fuck, I didn't. Oh, well, I'm going to fucking do what I can in this present moment to fucking figure it the fuck out. So yeah, absolutely. You figure it out now. Yes, you got yeah. to. But, and like things might change in the future, but like, oh, it's so hard, man, like to say, to predict that. And like be prepared in terms of a generalist sense. Do you know how to feel to your own one? That's actually fucking good. I have a water tank. Like, you know, those no. are, like those things are important. Yes, from a general standpoint, I think we shouldn't get too specific with it. Do you know what I mean? Like that this will happen. Like- What then, are the certainties then? What are the certainties? The certainties is death. Yes. Everybody you love is going to die. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the moments. Ah, yeah. But what do you do when that happens? And people don't think about that and then it hits them like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Woo. Sometimes, yeah, death comes out of nowhere and you're like, fuck, gotta pay for a funeral, gotta do all this. Yeah. I've had that. I've yeah. had people, um, oh, both my grandparents died pretty, not suddenly, but like it was pretty quick. Mm. Like it was pretty like, well, they gotta start, yeah, doing a funeral and shit. Like it just came out of nowhere. Um. Yeah, you, 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 like you can always like as you're saying you can be prepared, but sometimes it just snaps. Mm. Someone just fucking yeah, just goes, and you're like, "Fuck!" Did not see that coming. It's just, and that's yeah. I think that's where people get caught. I didn't see it coming. Now what Chris is saying, I love what Chris is saying. It's like the counter. It's like, yeah, are you the type of person who can adapt and improvise when there's chaos, when the unpredicted thing build things happen? You ready to train your gym, your home gym, for twelve months? <laughs> or when an injury? What about an injury? It's probably eventually gonna. You had one. What do you do when you get a serious injury? I don't know even like physically, but like mentally. Yeah. Like, cause that could that's like a bit of a trauma. I don't know. How did you go emotionally when you? Uh, what did you do? Was it a tear? Was yeah, it a tore? Um, tore my medial ligament and the uh, tendon, common flex tendon. In comp, like fuck. Like, how were you feeling? Like, did you even conceive? Did you th- ever think about that 
will or could happen in the future? No, I didn't think about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, you always like, I think the biggest thing is you go into something understanding the risks involved with it. You never think about it. Like I never thought like, oh fuck, what if this list, I hurt myself. No, like, I never think about it because I'm willing to go in there and I know the risks going into it, but I love it too much that I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You accept the risk. I accept it. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm going to do what I can to prevent it. Yeah. But fuck, you know, like I enjoy it. And I have so much love deeper than just, you know, getting a number or something that I have so much more love than that. That it's like, if it happens and it did happen, it happened. What did I do afterwards? Like I'm a real, like for me, I, I believe I'm a more proactive type of person. I was like, okay, so what do I need to do now? Yeah, let's go. It's happened. Yeah. Okay, like I, and I used to be like a bit of like, oh, this happened, this happened. And I fucking hate that. I hate fucking sulking around, bitching about. And there's going to be times where you need it. Yeah, but in the, the day, I'm real like, okay, this happened. What do I need to do? Yeah, I've been here before. I've had injuries before. All right. What do I need to do? That that's like, yeah, well, that's like fucking um, did he fucked his arm. Like he fucked um, uh, the side of his hand. He fucked his pinky um, just recently, like a couple of days ago. Like, and he's got a fucking train now where he can do obviously all lower body sort of work, but he's, he's um similar predicament to what you were in. He's like, um, yeah, one side of his body's, one side of his body in terms of his arm is pretty much done. So he can't, like, do anything for, like, six weeks in terms of that side of the body. So he's got to do single arm training and lower body training, obviously, can smash. But, yeah, it's just um, can you, like, especially with athletes, we tell them just fucking don't – You get they get caught up in this injury and it's like it's what you can't do. Well, what, what can you do? What, how else can we get progress? And it's like it's pretty simple shit, but people still get caught up in, like, I can't do this because I've got an arm injury. All right, you cool. get an injury, you don't train? I know. Stop training. I know. I oh that. my god, that's one of the biggest mistakes you can that. ever make. Yeah. We but can we can talk about cross education. We can talk, but we can even just talk about maintaining the habit mm. and just like there is something you can do. Don't give yourself an excuse and an out. Mate, real fucking safety bar vibe. Still in the sling. <laughs> fucking to it like a week and a half out of surgery. Just fucking sending my squats. The Fuck Dirk it. was training um, with me, and he was like oh, fucking awesome. doing belt squats and shit. Like, and he had a fucked arm and. Um, yeah, we were sending it. Um, well, he was sending it like, um, had, I think, what, three, four plates on each side. And it became where, like, he's like, fucking, we're pushing this. We're going to see how we can go in terms of that. So, like, loading up the, um, yeah, it's, it's just different. It's just different mindset as well. It's just different, like, yeah. I think to. with injury, you need to look at what can you take out of it. Because, what that, you- like, what can you take positively out of that injury? Like, out of this scenario. Like, all right, you got put in this position. Oh, well, boo-hoo. Fuck, man. <laughs> like, like, look, shit gonna happen. Stop being a little bitch. Yeah, stop being a little bitch, all right? It fucking happens. First thing about, all right, when it happens, it's what do I need on. to do now? Yeah? What can I still do? What did this teach me? What am I going to learn? Bro, like, fuck. If, we, if, if I was just training and everything was beautiful and I just kept fucking lifting every week and it was all fine, like, that's not fucking exciting. Where's the chaos? Where's the enjoyment? Because then when you do succeed, ooh... <laughs> Because you went through fire. Exactly. It wasn't easy. No. It's never fucking easy. Whether that's injury, fucking other forms of life. That if it's through. easy, what you did probably wasn't very great. No. Exactly. So sorry. 100%. Birth. Birth. Giving birth. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. No, I remember that. That's a very, like, con- it's a big <laughs> contrast. But, like, imagine a woman giving birth, the extreme pain and just excruciate. This whole yeah. nine months of just. Ah. Uh. Uh. Uh, it's not that bad. But then did the relief. <laughs> it's not that bad. Taking a shit's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Getting hit in the balls. <laughs> Getting in the balls. Uh, like, yeah, no, nah, 100%. What did you learn from your injury when you say that? Like, what's your main takeaway? That you can improve so many other things or like so many things that help your lifting or like just in, in general, you can improve so many things going through injury. Like I came out of it so fucking strong mm. in the lower body. It was fucked. Like in, in comparison to where I was before, do you know what I mean? Like, like I was able to work on other things and I could improve so many other qualities that probably got put on the back burner of things when I was lifting so much. Um, same with upper body strength, mass, do you know what I mean? Like different things, how much I was eating. I mean, like the things I didn't think about so much, the things that start to be a little bit more, um, you know, a bit more, What what's that word? A bit more out there i don't know i don't even know what i'm trying to say just mm-hmm. been on a brain fart as well but yeah. pretty much the things that you know you don't think about that now you can start thinking about so there's so many things it allows you to work on things that you probably weren't working on so you can come back and holistically get better at what you're trying to do weak points 
yeah, the weak points. Um, it just allows you to set a good mindset as well that like you go through something and you can just still be positive because mate, from day one from my arm, like when it happened, I was just like, yeah, just keep enjoying life. Fuck it. Yeah. All right. And I'm in a sling, but I'm still happy. I'm still enjoying yeah. life because there's much worse things off than that. Mm -hmm. So many, man. Like my arm wasn't even a, you know, it wasn't even a bad thing. It was just, it's just something that happened. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, it was a bit of a setback, but you know, that's not an issue. You need those things in life. I think it's so important to be put down, you know, put back to the ground, you know, get shit on. Humbled. Then it, humbled because it allows you to come back better. You need that. Yeah, you need it. Like, if you're not experiencing it, so if you're not experiencing it, you're not getting, putting yourself out there. If you don't get put shit back down on the ground at any point, like, you're not putting, really putting yourself out there. And I think because I went out there and I tried to do it, I failed and I'm fucking coming back, you know. I come, you know, it's, it's, it teaches you so much, man. It teaches mental resiliency as well. And just to be positive, just to be happy. It's easy to, though I, know, I always realize how easy it is to reflect after the fact, after all the pain's done. But in the moment, like on that day when you're on the phone call, with me, Tommy, um, after you're in the hospital, how are you feeling in the midst of it? Do you remember? Yeah, look, this injury was, I was probably the most positive I've ever been yeah. in comparison to other ones before, just because I've experienced it. Like I was more so concerned of, I just want to know what's happening. Mm. And I was curious, but I was like, look, I'm just glad to be fucking alive. Like I was a bit like, okay, yeah, look, I was sad what happened. You know, it was it was hard at the time because it was a very rare moment where like, you know, you put so much effort, you know, so much time and effort, especially something like weightlifting, like, like so much time and effort for such a small period of time, yeah. you know, to go to nationals and then, you know, it's a bum out, but it happens. I think I was just a bit sad that people were there and that, you know, I couldn't, I'm a real, like I love to be around everyone and succeed with everyone around me. But you know, when they say that you fail, I think it's a big eye opener that it's okay to fail and it's okay to be open about it. Do you mean not be like, oh no, you only succeed. Whereas it's like the people I love were the ones I saw me fail. And I think at first it was hard, but I think from that you kind of just improve and you're just like, hey, it's okay. Because they're the ones that help you. And then, you know, then when you do succeed, there's so much, you get like, even the people around you get so much enjoyment out of it, I found. Because they know what you've come from. Yes. You've come from just like, man, just a long road of, mm -hmm. of, of turmoil and just being shit. Yeah, and his uh, his training blocks coming up into like um, the comp. Like I don't know if you remember Chris, but you had like some fucking great training in terms of all that sort of stuff. So like, um, and you built a lot more momentum and stuff like that. Because I remember when Chris fucked his elbow, mm. I was a, I was competing in, at a comp. So I was like, oh. I was lifting. So like, I get um, after my squats, get these messages. I'm like, and um, Chris was like you know, about his injury and stuff. I was like, what the fuck? What, what happened to fucking Grizz? And then I see like, yeah, video and stuff that I think Emma was it? No, I think Stan was there, but Emma Hoy was, uh, anyways, um, I mean, she was around. She might've taken the video or something. But um, yeah, I just see Chris like his fucking album, like, what the fuck, like in the car. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, and I was like, I remember after comp, I'm like, fuck, gotta make sure Chris is all right, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I just said, man, like it just, it happened out of nowhere as well because like, Sometimes you just can't pick it. It's just fucking freak injuries. And it's just like how you responded from that was like you weren't like sucking. Like you can have a bit of a bitch like the day or day after as well, obviously. You're not going to be like fucking oh, it's, oh, positive straight away. Like you might have a bit of like a, a shit period. But then it's like fuck, man. Like what else can I do rather than like being a little fucking, um, you know, puss cunt. Like what can I do to fucking get back into like, you know, maintain some hyper. Like even as fucking different train styles, man. You go like from like weightlifting to like hypertrophy. So if you build a bigger muscle, more force output, everything like that, fuck, yeah. man. Massive that help, that helps you train this fucking variability. Force variability, mind you, obviously. But, like, yes. it, it also helps you develop a greater love for Olympic weightlifting. And now you're fucking lifting heavy now. So, well, yeah, I mean, sorry. Like, <laughs> even a couple of hours after me and Emma discussed, like, we already just had a conversation. Conversation. She's like, I already, you know, got you signed up for an MRI. Like, we're just, yeah. like, we're onto it. Like, a week and a half from incident till I had surgery. Like, we were just like, good. Like, well, what the fuck yeah. do we need to do? Like, three days out. So, happened on Saturday. Monday had an MRI. Um, Tuesday got it back. Wednesday had the appointment with her dad for surgery. Next Wednesday afterwards had the operation. Like, yeah, was I was quick. like, that day. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I was sad, like I said. But I was still like, all right, what the fuck do I need to do now? Like, on the day. I was sitting there. That's a mentality, man. 
not many people have that mentality. I don't know if you know, you, maybe you, it's obvious, but like not many people have that proactive. A lot of people just sit in the just, they just sit with the shit feeling and they just feel sorry for themselves. And it's whatever they go through in life, not just an injury, but just like hard shit in life. And they just sit with it and they just, they go to addictions, they go to drugs, they go to cruxes, they go to food, they go to partying, they go to drugs. Man, it's just... Well, my, you're built different. Well, my, my mentality is there's nothing you can do about it now. Like there's literally, I can't fucking go back in time. Yeah, te- wait, when Elon Musk, brother, when you fucking invent time machine, I'm coming to you, all right? That's the first thing I'm doing. Right? I'll call you, but- I'm changing some time. Yeah, all right, done, let's go uh, back. I've got some places I've got to go. Yeah, but- 1940s Germany. At that moment. <laughs> <laughs> that ger- Germany's getting a bit of a shake up. 19, uh, 19, 1910s, uh, uh, Turkish cucks. <laughs> Those Turkish dog cunts. Anyways, yeah, so. No, I like that. Um, <laughs> but yes, like I'm a, I'm a real big, like there's nothing I can fucking do. Like there's not, I can't go back in time. But, so. but some people don't have that. How do you give that to some, or how do you teach some guide them? How, like so many people are suffering. Last couple of years, bro. Yes. Mm. <laughs> you know, people, people call it like, um, oh bro. What do you remember from our conversation? Pardon? Do you, what, what do you remember from our conversation post that? Injury. Do you remember anything? I remember talking to you on the phone after in the hospital. But beyond that, nothing other than what you've already been saying to me. What are you? T- what? What are you thinking? No, I'm just saying that I think what I. I don't remember what, any negativity. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to say that even on the phone call, a couple of hours afterwards, I was. I and I do believe I was ready. I was ready to go. Okay, what the fuck do I need yeah, to do? Let's go. Let's go. And I think it's hard because Let's not, go. not everyone's going to have it, but the only way you can kind of develop it is kind of going like just yeah, right? saying, stop, stop being a fucking bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's just my opinion. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being aware of your emo- you know, emotional surrounding and how you're feeling, but, and you know, dealing with these issues, not just ignoring them. But in the, the day, bro, this is how, this is my perception. Time never fucking stops. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, say you're stressed out for exam, the way I calm myself down is, say it starts at 11, finishes at one. 101 will come. Like regardless, if you sort yourself out, figure your fucking brain out and go in there with the right brain or you just sit there, 101 will come. You can't press pause on time. So in my brain, I'm like, I just may as well stay calm and just go in there with an open brain because 101 will come and I'll be done. 101 will come and the exam will be done. So- Everything will pass. Everything yeah. will pass. Time never stops. So if I sit there like this, like, oh, this, 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 it's like, fuck, every second I'm wasting. Like, yeah. What am I doing to better myself? You know what I mean? And this is where it's like, you know, you just got to overcome it. Something happens, okay, what do we do? Because that's in every aspect of life. Something happens, what do we do? Because it's awesome to be proactive, but, you know, sometimes you got to be uh, efficiently reactive to situations that happen that you don't want. That's really good. Really, mm. really well said. Absolutely. Like, how quickly can you pivot Yes. after adversity or after an opportunity? And the biggest thing is, um, as unfortunate it is, only you can do it. No one can say, I can't go up to you and be like, cunt, you need to fucking sort it out. I can try, support you and try, guide you. But in the day, if you don't want to fucking, if you still want to sit there and suck and, you know, be upset and deal with those issues, what happened, then that's how it is. And then the day, and this is just me being harsh, that's where you see people who fucking succeed and who don't. That's it. Shut up. And not everyone's meant to succeed. That's fine. Exactly. This is the na- this is the nature of life. That's just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. Right. I don't really have any shit other to say, bro. You summed it up. It's a good good way to end the potty. Is, is that? Is that this might be a good way to end it. Yeah. You guys got anything else on your mind? I don't know. Um, Welcome to fight. Figure the fuck out. Uh, oh. <laughs> It's going to go into some uh, self-promotion. I'll try and get some shirts out. Um, we've got Strength Facade shirts coming. When, when are your shirts coming out? You're on strengthfacade.com. Yeah. Click on the apparel button. <laughs> the re- hey, I made a Stay Dangerous shirt because I was sick of hearing this stay safe bullshit. <laughs> stay safe. People end emails. People end. I get the intention, right? <laughs> the intention is kindness. The intention yeah. is I don't want you to get sick and die. Yeah. Roger that. Um, <laughs> that's fine. But it became it permeates people's mentality. People stay stay safe, stay safe, and they be, it begins like seeping into everything else they do. And now you're not taking risk. Now you're taking the path of least resistance every time. Well, 
I can't stay safe. You can't stay safe when you're Ollie lifting. You can't stay safe when you're lifting jack and heavy weights. You can't stay safe when you have any ambitious goals in your life because the path of maximal output results, progress, is on the path that is dangerous, the path of risk. Therefore, stay dangerous. Keep going. Stay on the path. Yeah. That's harder to do than stay safe. Trust me, in this fucking day and age, very easy to stay safe. Very hard to continuously stay fucking dangerous. That's right. And keep putting out there. That's right. We're in a very, uh, and I'll just finish it off like this. Mm. Oh, oh here we go. But <laughs> in this day and age, it's very easy to wake up and limit ourselves and our abilities because it feels more comfortable. But at the end of the day, if you really do want to achieve something, you have to be uncomfortable. You have to wake up. And this is just my opinion. You have to wake up with a little bit of fucking nerve, a little bit of fire, and you just need to fucking go in. Sometimes in the morning I wake up and I'll like talk to myself. I'll like, so let's fucking go. I'll like, I'll like jack, I'll G myself up. I'm like, cause I want to stay in bed and sleep more. Like my brain, like a science brain is like sleep, recovery, uh, memory retention, physiology, blah, blah, nerd <laughs> shit. Shut your mouth. Let's go. And I, you know, <gasps> and you get up and go. Yeah, okay, sure. we got shit to do. We got mounds to climb. Yeah, exactly right. You got shit. You got shit to discover. You got shit to go into and everything like that. It's good yeah. when you can wake up excited with a purpose. That there's nothing greater in life um, that I, I could. I wish uh, more people could have uh, and find. And the best way I've learned to find that is you need to try shit. You need to try different shit. You, it's not going to come to you like some fucking, you know, epiphany from the universe or, or God, right? Maybe in like, you know, you do some ayahuasca trip and you find it, but even that is doing something. You need to do something. You need to try, go to zoos. You need to try poetry. You need to go expose yourself to different people. You need to do. Otherwise, how, how will you find it? It won't come to you. You need to try different things. You need to learn different things. You need, you need to expose yourself to different things. And then eventually you find the thing and we're here now together because we found a thing that we all share common, common, in common. And it's a beautiful thing. And I love you guys. Yeah, I love you too, man. I love you boys. Um, we've got to get the uh, two other, we've got to get Jademans on here mm-hmm. when he's um, yes. good to go. Mm-hmm. I reckon a Tommy. Yes. Um, bring them all down. Yeah, I'll br- I'll bring chairs. We'll make it chaos. I just want chaos. Yeah, we'll Super. just get we'll get a couple on headphones. Couple. I'll on get my yard to make some spanner copy done. This Greek shit. That's enough. Fucking this Greek shit. I fucking love it. <laughs> Only Italians around here. And we got to get um, uh, we got to get sandals down to um, culture, to culture, and your mums again. And my, um, yeah. Uh, the old uh, Keelor area. I've got to get a couple of more of the boys. Still, man. Set it up. Yeah. Set it up. Lasagna. Um, I had, had the boys down. We had a good, uh, good <laughs> lot going on there. Um, talked a lot of shit. Of course. Um, there was some funny stuff in there. But um, yeah, it'd be good. Um, yeah, we'll do it. Take some footage for the potty. I don't know. See what happens. But um, yeah, it's been good today. I really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like we can get some stuff going, me and Dirk, in terms of like an actual potty. I reckon. What could, would you call it? Oh. <laughs> I think we need some time. Thinking yeah, about. Gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to have to brainstorm here. Brainstorm. You could do something on your playing words on both your names. You guys have interesting names. You can find it. Like, yeah. The Bricksticles. Jack Bristicles. Keep, 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 keep working on that. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's keep, <laughs> let's keep working on that one. Let's keep brainstorming. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch that. B fucking D. I don't know. So, yeah, anyways. <laughs> All right, chimps. Uh, we out of here? Yeah. yeah. Um, where, well, first of all, where can we find you, Chris, once again? At Coach Decranis <laughs> on Instagram. Jeremy just took over the podcast. Um, He's the at, host now. At Jay Hol- <laughs> Holm Aledi. Watch for training videos, um, music videos. Uh, just me being an absolute cuck. So watch that. We love you. C-U-C-K. <laughs> and, and obviously they can find sandals at... Sandals, where can we find you, brother? Uh, I'm, I can't find me. Don't look oh, for right. me. Okay. You, all right, Don't worry about me. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to tell you, this is our podcast now. <laughs> You've taken over. Yeah, it. it's, it's nice to uh, <laughs> nice to, to hand over the reins <laughs> to two better men. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk some gyms. All right. That's all we do. We out. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. I'm oh. not in that one. What a fuck. How long is that? It's two and a half hours. Wow. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>